Okay. Shabbat Shalom family. Now that we are done with that, <clears throat> we're going to get to what we're going to go over today. Now, what we're going to cover today is going to come out of the Nags Hamadi. And if you don't have it, please don't worry about that. That's really not as important as you learning. All right, so those of you that have Nags Hamadi, Shabbat Shalom to everybody entering the chat. Shabbat Shalom. Um, the book that we're going over is The Secret. I'll show it to you. Let's see if I have it up here. It's The Secret Book of John. So those of you that have the Nags Hamadi, you may already be familiar with this. Now, what this is going over, ladies and gentlemen, I was so fascinated by this book when I read it. I read this for the first time, probably like around 2000, <laughs> 2012. And that's right, don't forget to sub to Cabrera Santana, the new channel. I read this about 2012. And the Nag Hammadi is really good because it's part of the lost books that we have access to and it kind of fills in the gap. Now you're gonna hear, some of you that are not familiar with this, you're gonna hear names that you never ever heard before. One is Barbello. Barbello is what you call an Aeon, which is a good spirit. She's like the feminine side, a feminine spirit from the most high. Now, one of the things <laughs> he did for each one of these female spirits, he allowed them to make a request to him of anything that they wanted. Now, the one thing that she asked for 
was to be in, indestructible. She can never, ever be destroyed. And he actually gave it to her. So she is uh, one of the spirits that's responsible for the forethought. Now, there is another spirit that was once high, and that was Sophia. Sophia kind of fell out of grace because what she did, she tried to ditch the most high and do things all on her own. And for that, she kind of lost her top spot, but he still took her back. Now, Sophia is responsible for the afterthoughts that you have. So you're going to hear about Barbello and Sophia, and you're going to hear about a whole bunch of angels. Now, when the Most High put Adam together, he did make him from the dust of the earth, but Adam had to literally be assembled. So what he did was he put together a team of angels and some demons. Now, I know you may say, why would the Most High use demons in putting Adam together because they had some traits that he wanted Adam to possess. Things like pleasure, that actually comes from demons. Envy, jealousy, fear, those are things that come from demons. So he wanted Adam to possess both good and traits also that came from demons. So it is crazy. But when you hear it, it is the most fascinating thing you ever want to hear. And you're going to hear about all of these different angels that came forward. Remember, he's got a whole army of angels. So there's going to be angel names you never, ever heard before. But these are all the Most High sons. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to let the whole thing play through. And then after it's over, then we can kind of chat about it. All right. Let me put it on full screen. This is about a um, little over 45 minutes. The secret book of John, the teaching of the Savior, and the revelation of the mysteries and the things hidden in silence, things he taught his student John. The revealer appears to John. One day when John, the brother of James, the sons of Zebedee, went up to the temple, it happened that a Pharisee named Eremonius came up to him and said to them, Where is your teacher whom you followed? John said to him, He has returned to the place from which he came. The Pharisee said to him, This Nazarene has deceived you badly, filled your ears with lies, closed your minds, and turned you from the tradition of your parents. When I, John, heard this, I turned away from the temple and went to the mountainous and barren place. I was distressed within, and I said, how was the Savior selected? Why was he sent into the world by his Father? Who is his Father who sent him? To what kind of eternal realm shall we go? And what was he saying when he told us, this eternal realm to which you'll go is modeled after the incorruptible realm, but he did not teach us what kind of realm that one is. At the moment I was thinking about this, look, the heavens opened, all creation under heaven lit up, and the world shook. I was afraid, and look, I saw within the light a child standing by me. As I was staring, it seemed to be an elderly person. Again, it changed in appearance to be a youth. Not that there were several figures before me. Rather, there was a figure with several forms within the light. These forms appeared through each other, and the figure had three forms. The figure said to me, John, John, why are you doubting? Why are you afraid? Are you not familiar with this figure? Then do not be faint-hearted, I am with you always. I am the father, I am the mother, I am the child, I am the incorruptible and the undefiled one. Now I have come to teach you what is, what was, and what is to come, that you may understand what is invisible and what is visible, and to teach you about the unshakable race of perfect humankind. So now lift up your head that you may understand the things I shall teach you today, and that you may relate them to your spiritual friends." who are from the unshakable race of perfect humankind. The one, I asked if I might understand this, and it said to me, the one is a sovereign that has nothing over it. It is God and father of all, the invisible one that is over all, that is incorruptible, that is pure light of which no eye can gaze. The one is the invisible spirit. 
we should not think of it as God or like a God, for it is greater than a God, because it is nothing over it and no Lord above it. It does not exist within anything inferior to it, since everything exists within it alone. It is eternal, since it does not need anything, for it is absolutely complete. It was never lacked anything in order to be completed by it. Rather, it is always absolutely complete in light. The one is eliminable, since there is nothing before it to limit it. Unfathomable, since there is nothing before it to fathom it. Immeasurable, since there was nothing before it to measure it. Invisible, since nothing has seen it. Eternal, since it exists eternally. Unutterable, since nothing could comprehend it to utter it. Unnameable, since there is nothing before it to give it a name. The one is the immeasurable light, pure, holy, immaculate. The one is unutterable and is perfect in incorruptibility. Not that it is a part of perfection or blessedness or divinity. It is much greater. The one is not corporeal and is not incorporeal. The one is not large and is not small. It is impossible to say how much is it, what kind is it, for no one can understand it. The one is not among the things that exist, but is much greater. Not that it is greater, rather as it is in itself. It is not a part of the eternal realms or of time. For whatever is part of a realm was once prepared by another. Time was not allotted to it, since it receives nothing from anyone. What would be received would be on loan. The one who is first does not need to receive anything from another. Such a one beholds itself in its light. The one is majestic and has an immeasurable purity. The one is a realm that gives a realm, life that gives life, a blessed one that gives blessedness, knowledge that gives knowledge, a good one that gives goodness, mercy that gives mercy and redemption, grace that gives grace. Not as if the one possesses all of this, rather it is the one gives immeasurable and incomprehensible light. What shall I tell you about it? Its eternal realm is incorruptible, at peace, dwelling in silence, at rest before everything. It is the head of all realms, and it sustains them through its goodness. We would not know what is ineffable. We would not understand what is immeasurable, were it not for what has come from the Father. This is the one who has told these things to us alone. Barbello appears. Now this Father is the one who beholds himself in the light surrounding him, which is a spring of living water and provides all the realms. He reflects on his image everywhere sees it in the spring of the spirit and becomes enamored of his luminous water for his image is in the spring of pure luminous water surrounding him the father's thought became a reality and she who appeared in the presence of the father and shining light came forth she is the first power who preceded everything and came forth from the father's mind as a forethought of all her light shines like the Father's light. She, the perfect power, is the image of the perfect and invisible virgin spirit. She, the first power, the glory of Barbello, the perfect glory among the realms, the glory of revelation, she glorified and praised the virgin spirit, for because of this, the spirit she had come forth. She is the first thought, the image of the spirit. She became the universal womb, for she precedes everything. The mother, father, the first human, the Holy Spirit, the triple male, the triple power, the androgynous one with three names, the eternal realm among the invisible beings, the first to come forth. Barbella asked the invisible virgin spirit to give her foreknowledge and the spirit consented. When the spirit consented, foreknowledge appeared and stood by forethought. This is the one who came from the thought of the invisible virgin spirit. Foreknowledge glorified the spirit and the spirit's perfect power, Barbello, for because of her foreknowledge had come into being. She asked again to be given incorruptibility, and the spirit consented. When the spirit consented, incorruptibility appeared and stood by thought and foreknowledge. Incorruptibility glorified the invisible one in Barbello. Because of her, they had come into being. Barbello asked to be given life eternal, and the invisible spirit consented. When the Spirit consented, life eternal appeared, and they stood together and glorified the invisible Spirit in Barbello, because of her they had come into being. She asked again to be given truth, and the invisible Spirit consented. Truth appeared, and they stood together and glorified the good invisible Spirit and its Barbello, because of her they had come into being. This is the Father's realm of five. 
It is the first human, the image of the invisible spirit, that is, forethought, which is barbello and thought, along with foreknowledge, incorruptibility, life eternal, truth. This is the androgynous realm of five, which is the realm of ten, which is the father. Barbello conceives. The father gazed into Barbello with the pure light surrounding the invisible spirit and its radiance. Barbello conceived from it, and it produced a spark of light similar to the blessed light, but not as great. This was the only child of the mother-father that had come forth its only offspring, the only child of the father of the pure light. The invisible virgin spirit rejoiced over the light that was produced that came forth first from the first power of the spirit's forethought, who is Barbello. The spirit anointed it with its own goodness until it was perfect, with no lack of goodness, since it was anointed with the goodness of the invisible spirit. The child stood in the presence of the spirit as the spirit anointed the child. When the child received this from the spirit, at once it glorified the Holy Spirit and perfect forethought, because of her it had come forth. The child asked to be given mind, as a companion to work with, and the spirit consented. When the invisible spirit consented, mind appeared and stood by the anointed, and glorified the spirit and Barbello. All these things being came into existence in silence. Mind wished to create something by means of the word of the invisible spirit. Its will became a reality and appeared with mind and light glorifying it. Word followed will, for the anointed, the self-conceived God, created everything by the word. Life eternal. Will, mind, and foreknowledge stood together and glorified the invisible spirit in Barbello, for because of her they had come into being. The Holy Spirit brought the self-conceived divine child of itself in Barbello to perfection, so the child might stand before the great invisible virgin spirit as the self-conceived God, the anointed, who honored the spirit with loud acclaim. The child came forth through forethought. The invisible virgin spirit set the true self-conceived God over everything and caused all authority and the truth within to be subject to it so that the child might understand everything. The one called by name greater than every name for that name will be told to those who are worthy of it. The four luminaries, now from the light, which is the anointed, and from incorruptibility, by the grace of the Spirit, the four luminaries that derive from the self-conceived God gazed out in order to stand before it. The three beings are will, thought, life. The four powers are understanding, grace, perception, thoughtfulness. Grace dwells in the eternal realm of the luminary, Harmazal, who is the first angel. There are three other realms with this eternal realm, grace, truth, form. The second luminary is Oriel, who has been appointed over the second eternal realm. There are three other realms with it, afterthought, perception, memory. The third luminary is Devathai, who has been appointed over the third eternal realm. There are three other realms with it, understanding, love, idea. The fourth eternal realm has been set up for the fourth luminary, Aleth. These are three other realms with it, perfection, peace, Sophia. These are the four luminaries that stand before the self-conceived God. These are the twelve eternal realms that stand before the child of the great self-conceived, the anointed, by the will and grace of the invisible spirit. The twelve realms belong to the child of the self-conceived one, and everything was established by the will of the Holy Spirit through the self-conceived one. Garadamus and Seth Now from the foreknowledge of the perfect mind, through the expressed will of the invisible spirit and the will of the self-conceived one, came the perfect human, the first revelation, the truth. The virgin spirit named the human Garadamus, and appointed Garadamus to the first eternal realm with the great self-conceived, the anointed by the first luminary, Harmazal. Its powers dwell with it. The invisible one gave Garadamus an unconquerable power of mind. Garadamus spoke and glorified and praised the invisible spirit by saying, Because of you, everything is coming to being, and to you everything will return. I shall praise and glorify you and the self-conceived and the eternal realms the three, father, mother, child, the perfect power. 
There Adamus appointed his son, Seth, to the second eternal realm before the second luminary, Oriel. In the third eternal realm were stationed the offsprings of Seth with the third luminary, Devathai. The souls of the saints were stationed there. In the fourth eternal realm were stationed the souls of those who were ignorant of the fullness. They did not repent immediately, but held out for a while and repented later. They came to be with the fourth luminary, Aleth, and they are creatures that glorify the invisible spirit. The fall of Sophia. Now Sophia, who is the wisdom of afterthought, and who constitutes an eternal realm, conceived of a thought form from herself and the conception of the invisible spirit and foreknowledge. She wanted to bring forth something like herself without the consent of the spirit, who had not given approval without her partner and without his consideration. The male did not give approval. She did not find her partner, and she considered this without the spirit's consent and without the knowledge of her partner. Nonetheless, she gave birth, and because of the invincible power within her, her thought was not an idle thought. Something came out of her that was imperfect and different in appearance from her, for she had produced it without her partner. It did not resemble its mother and was misshapen. When Sophia saw what her desire had produced, it changed into a figure of a snake with the face of a lion. Its eyes were like flashing bolts of lightning. She cast it away from her outside the realm so that none of the immortals would see it. She had produced it ignorantly. She surrounded it with a bright cloud and put in a throne in the middle of the cloud so that no one would see it except the Holy Spirit, who is called the Mother of the Living. She named her offspring Yaldaboth. Yaldaboth's World Order Yaldabaoth is the first ruler who took great power from his mother. Then he left her and moved away from the place where he was born. He took control and created for himself other realms with luminous fire, which still exists. He made it with the mindlessness in him and produced authorities for himself. The name of the first is Atath, whom generations call the Reaper. The second is Harmas, who is the Jealous Eye. The third is Kalila Umbri. The fourth is Yabel. The fifth is Adonas, who is called Saboth. The sixth is Cain, whom generations of people call the sun. The seventh is Abel. The eighth is Abrasin. The ninth is Yobel. The tenth is Armapil. The eleventh is Melker Aduin. The twelfth is Belias, who is over the depth of the underworld. Yeldabaoth stationed seven kings, one for each sphere of heaven, to reign over the seven heavens, and five to reign over the depth of the abyss. He shared his fire with them, but he did not give away any of the power of the light that he had taken from his mother, for he is ignorant darkness. When light mixed with darkness, it made the darkness shine. When darkness mixed with light, it dimmed the light and became neither light nor darkness, but rather gloom. This gloomy ruler has three names. The first name is Yaldabaoth. The second is Sakla. The third is Samael. He is wicked in his mindlessness that is in him. He said, I am God and there is no other God but me, since he did not know where his own strength had come from. The rulers created seven powers for themselves and the powers created six angels apiece until there were 365 angels. These are the names and the corresponding appearances. The first is Atoth and has the face of a sheep. The second is Alohas and has the face of a donkey. The third is Astophius and has the face of a hyena. The fourth is Yao and has the face of a snake with seven heads. The fifth is Saboath and has the face of a snake. The sixth is Adonan and has the face of an ape. The seventh is Sabatias and has a face of a flaming fire. This is the sevenfold nature of the weak. Yaldabaoth has many faces, more than all of these, so that he could show whatever face he wanted when he was among the seraphim. He shared his fire with them and loitered it over them because of the glorious power he had from his mother's light. That is why he called himself God and defied the place from which he came. In his thought, he united the seven powers with the authorities that were with him. When he spoke, it was done. He named each of the powers beginning with the highest. First is goodness, with the first power, Atoth. Second is forethought, with the second power, Eloius. Third is divinity, with the third power, Estonius. Fourth is lordship, with the fourth power, Yao. Fifth is kingdom, with the fifth power, Saboth.
Six is jealousy with the sixth power, Adonan. Seventh is understanding with the seventh power, Sabbatias. Each has a sphere in its own realm. They were named after the glory above for the destruction of the powers. While the names given them by their maker were powerful, the names given them after the glory above would bring about their destruction and loss of power. That is why they have two names. Yaldabaoth organized everything after the patterns of the first realms that had come into being, so that he might create everything in an incorruptible form. Not that he had seen the incorruptible ones, rather the power that is in him, that he had taken from his mother, produced in him the pattern for the world order. When he saw creation surrounding him and the throng of angels around him who had come forth from him, he said to them, I am a jealous God, and there is no other God beside me. But by announcing this, he suggested to the angels with him that there is another God. For if there were no other God, of whom would he be jealous? Sophia repents. Then the mother began to move around. She realized that she was lacking something when the brightness of her light diminished. She grew dim because her partner had not collaborated with her. I said, Master, what does it mean that she moved around? The master laughed and said, Do not suppose that it is as Moses said above the waters. No, when she recognized the wickedness that had occurred in the robbery her son had committed, she repented. When she became forgetful in the darkness of ignorance, she began to be ashamed. She did not dare to return, but she was agitated. This agitation is the moving around. The arrogant one took power from his mother. He was ignorant, for he thought no one existed except his mother alone. When he saw the throng of angels he had created, he exalted himself over them. When the mother realized that the trappings of darkness had come into being imperfectly, she understood that her partner had not collaborated with her. She repented with many tears. The whole realm of fullness heard her prayer of repentance and offered praise on her behalf to the invisible virgin spirit, and the spirit consented. When the invisible spirit consented, the Holy Spirit poured upon her some of the fullness of all. For her partner did not come to her on his own, but he came to her through the realm of fullness, so that he might restore what she lacked. She was taken up not to her own eternal realm, but to a position above her son. She was to remain in the ninth heaven until she restored what was lacking in herself. The human appears, a voice called from the exalted heavenly realm. The human exists and the human child. The first ruler, Yaldabaoth, heard the voice and thought it had come from his mother. He did not realize its source. The holy, perfect mother, father, the complete forethought, the image of the invisible one, being the father of everything, though whom everything came into being, the first human. This is the one who showed them and appeared in human shape. The entire realm of the first ruler quaked, and the foundation of the abyss shook. The bottom of the waters above the material world was lighted by this image that had appeared. When all the authorities and the first ruler stared at his appearance, they saw the whole bottom as it was illumined, and through the light they saw the shape of the image in the water. The creation of Adam, Yaldabaoth, said to the authorities with him, Come, let us create a human being after the image of God and with a likeness to ourselves, so that this human image may give us light. They created through their respective powers according to the features that were given to them. Each of the authorities contributed a physical feature corresponding to the figure of the image they had seen. They created a being like a perfect first human and said, let us call it Adam, and its name may give us power of light. The powers began to create. The first one, goodness, created a soul of bone. The second forethought created a soul of sinew. The third divinity created a soul of flesh. The fourth lordship created a soul of marrow. The fifth kingdom created a soul of blood. The sixth jealousy created a soul of skin. The seventh understanding created a soul of hair. The throng of angels stood by and received these seven physical substances from the authorities in order to create a network of limbs and trunk with all parts properly arranged. The first one, who is Rafo, began by creating the head. Abron created the skull. Menegastro created the brain. Astrachim, the right eye. Thathamoka, the left eye. Euronymus, the right ear. Besum, the left ear. Akarim, the nose. Benin, Ephraim, the lips. Amen, the teeth. Ibikan, the molars. Basaladim, the tonsils. Achacha, the uvula. Abaddon, the neck, 
Chaman, the vertebrae, Dircho, the throat, Tirbar, the right shoulder, Minarkan, the right elbow, the left shoulder, E, the left elbow, Abitrion, the right underarm, Unithen, the left underarm, Cruz, the right hand, Baloo, the right hand, Trenu, the fingers of the right hand, Balbal, the fingers of the left hand, Krima, the fingernails, Astrops, the right breast, Baroth, the left breast, Baum, the right shoulder joint, Arim, the left shoulder joint, Areach, the belly, Fitu, the navel, Senefim, the abdomen, Eratopi, the right ribs, Zebido, the left ribs, Marias, the right hip, Finuth, the left hip, Abinlaki, the marrow, Gnuchimarin, the bones, Gasul, the stomach, Agramana, the heart, Banu, the lungs, Sastrapal, the liver, Anisimlar, the spleen, Thapathro, the intestines, Biblo, the kidneys, Roror, the sinews, Tafrio, the backbone, Ipospapo, the veins, Bainborin, the arteries, Atanamesapithi, the breath and all the limbs, Intholia, all the flesh, the Duke, the right buttock, Arabi, the left buttock, Blank, the penis, Elo, the testicles, Sorma, the genitals, Gormash, the gabar, the right thigh, Nebrith, the left thigh, Serum, the muscles on the right leg, Asaklas, the muscle on the left, Ormoth, the right leg, Eminen, the left leg, Nux, the right shin, Tepulon, the left shin, Achiel, the right ankle, Thunum, the left ankle, Biothrum, the right foot, Bobel, its toes, Truckum, the left foot, Fikna, its toes, Miamai, the toenails, Laborian. Those who are pointed over all these are seven in number. Atoth, Armoth, Kalala, Yabel, Sabath, Cain, Abel. Those who activate the limbs part by part, the head, Diolimadraza, the neck, Yamax, the right shoulder, Yakoib, the left shoulder, Oriton, the right hand, or Didi, the left hand, Arbal, the fingers of the right hand, Lampo, the fingers of the left hand, Likafar, the right breast, Barbar, the left breast, Ime, the chest, Basandrophes, the right shoulder joint, Croide, the left shoulder joint, Odiar, the right ribs, Asphyxix, the left ribs, Sunochuta, the abdomen, Arof, the womb, Sabalo, the right thigh, Karchab, the left thigh, Katheon, all the genitals, Bathanoth, the right leg, Cho, the left leg, Karcha, the right shin, Aror, the left shin, Tothka, the right ankle, Aol, the left ankle, Cheriner, the right foot, Bastion, its toes, Architeneth, the left foot, Maraponth, its toes, Abrana. Seven have been empowered over all of these. Michael, Uriel, Esmenides, Cephistol, Armorium, Rikram, Amiorts. Those who are over the senses are Archidenka, the one who is over perception, is Ditha Barkas, the one who is over imagination, is Onma, the one who is over arrangement, is Akim, the one who is over impulse to action, is Rear Manacho. The source of the demons that are in the entire body is divided into four, heat, cold, wetness, dryness. The mother of them all is matter. The one who is lord over heat is Plaxifa. The one who is lord over cold is Oroothus. The one who is lord over what is dry is Iramacho. The one who is lord over wetness is Athuro. The mother of these, Onathorchus, stands in the midst of them, for she is unlimited and mingles with them all. She is matter, and by her they are nourished. The four principal demons, 
are epinephine, the demon of pleasure, yoko, the demon of desire, nenethmia, the demon of grease, blauman, the demon of fear. The mother of them all is a thesis, uch epi to. From the four demons have come the passions. From grief come jealousy, envy, pain, trouble, distress, hard-heartedness, anxiety, sorrow, and others. From pleasure comes an abundance of evil, vain, conceit, and the like. From desire come anger, wrath, bitterness, intense lust, greed, and the like. From fear come terror, servility, anguish, and shame. All these are like virtues and vices. The insight into their true nature is a narrow who is the head of the material soul, and it dwells with esthesis, the ouch epito. This is the number of angels. In all, they number 365. They all work together until limb by limb, the physical and material body was completed. Now there are others over the remaining passions, and I have not told you about them. If you want to know about them, the information is recorded in the book of Zoroaster. Adam receives spirit and life. All the angels and demons worked together until they fashioned the physical body, but for a long time their creation did not stir, stir or move at all. When the mother wanted to take back the power she had relinquished to the first ruler, she prayed to the most merciful mother-father of all. With a sacred command, the mother-father sent five luminaries down to the place of the angels of the first ruler. They advised him so that they might recover the mother's power. They said to Yaldabaoth, Breathe some of your spirit into the face of Adam, and then the body will arise. He breathed his spirit into Adam. The spirit is the power of his mother, but he did not realize this because he lives in ignorance. The mother's power went out of Yaldabaoth and into the physical body, and it made him to be like the one who was from the beginning. The body moved and became powerful, and it was enlightened. At once the rest of the powers became jealous, although Adam had come into being through all of them, and they had all given their power to this human. Adam was more intelligent than the creators and the first ruler. When they realized that Adam was enlightened and could think more clearly than they and was stripped of evil, they took and threw Adam into the lowest part of the whole material realm. The blessed, benevolent, merciful mother father had compassion for the mother's power that had been removed from the first ruler. The rulers might be able to overpower the physical, perceptible body once again. So with its benevolent spirit and great mercy, the father-mother sent a helper to Adam, an enlightened afterthought who is from the father-mother and who is called life. She helped the whole creature, laboring with it, restoring it to its fullness, teaching it about the descent of the seed, teaching it about the way of ascent, which is the way of descent. Enlightened afterthought was hidden within Adam, so that the rulers might not recognize her, but that afterthought might be able to restore what the mother lacked. The Imprisonment of Humanity The human being Adam was revealed through the bright shadow within, and Adam's ability to think was greater than that of all the creators. When they looked up, they saw that Adam's ability to think was greater, and they devised a plan with the whole throng of rulers and angels. They took fire, earth, and water and combined them with the four fiery winds. They wrought them together and made a great commotion. The rulers brought Adam into the shadow of the death so that they might produce a figure again from earth, water, fire, and the spirit that comes from matter, that is, from the ignorance of darkness and desire and their own false spirit. This is the cave for remodeling the body, for these criminals put on the human, the fetter of forgetfulness. Adam became a mortal being, the first to descend and the first to become estranged. The enlightened afterthought within Adam, however, would rejuvenate Adam's mind. The rulers took Adam and put Adam in paradise. They said eat, meaning do so in a leisurely manner. But in fact, their pleasure is bitter and their beauty is perverse. Their pleasure is a trap. Their trees are a sacrilege, their fruit is deadly poison, their promise is death. They put their tree of life in the middle of paradise. I shall teach you the secret of their life, the plan they devise together, the nature of their spirit. The root of their tree is bitter, its branches are death, its shadow is hatred, a trap is in its leaves, its blossoms is bad ointment, its fruit is death, desire is at its seed, its blossoms in darkness. The dwelling place of those who taste of it is the underworld, and darkness is their resting place. But the rulers lingered in front of what they call the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the enlightened afterthought, so that Adam and that might not behold its fullness and recognize his shameful nakedness. 
but I was the one who induced them to eat. I said to the Savior, Master, was it not the snake that instructed Adam to eat? The Savior laughed and said, The snake instructed them to eat of the wickedness of sexual desire and destruction so that Adam might be of use to the snake. This is the one who knew Adam was disobedient because of the enlightened afterthought within Adam, which made Adam stronger of mind than the first ruler. The first ruler wanted to recover the power that he himself had passed on to Adam, so he brought deep sleep upon Adam. I said to the Savior, What is this deep sleep? The Savior said, It is not as Moses wrote and you have heard. He said in his first book, He put Adam to sleep. Rather, this deep sleep was a loss of sense. Thus the ruler said, Through the prophet, I shall make their minds sluggish, that they may neither understand nor discern. The Creation of Eve Enlightened afterthought hid herself within Adam. The first ruler wanted to take her from Adam's side, but enlightened afterthought cannot be apprehended. While darkness pursued her, it did not apprehend her. The first ruler removed part of Adam's power and created another figure in the form of a female. Like the image of afterthought that had appeared to him, he put the part he had taken from the power of the human being into a female creature. It did not happen, however, the way Moses said Adam's rib. Adam saw the woman beside him. At once enlightened afterthought appeared and removed the veil that covered his mind. He sobered up from the drunkenness of darkness. He recognized his counterpart and said, This is now bone for my bone and flesh for my flesh. For this reason a man will leave his father and his mother and will join himself to his wife, and the two of them will become one flesh. For his partner will be sent to him, and he will leave his father and his mother. Our sister Sophia is the one who descended in an innocent manner to restore what she lacked. For this reason she was called life, that is, the mother of the living, by the forethought of the sovereignty of heaven and by the afterthought that appeared to Adam. Through her have the living tasted perfect knowledge. As for me, I appeared in the form of an eagle, and on the tree of knowledge, which is the afterthought of the pure enlightened forethought, that I might teach the human beings and awaken them from the depth of sleep. For the two of them were fallen and realized that they were naked. Afterthought appeared to them as light and awakened their minds. Yaldabaoth defiles Eve. When Yaldabaoth realized that the humans had withdrawn from him, he cursed his earth. He found the woman as she was preparing himself for her husband. He was master over her, and he did not know the mastery that he had come into being through the sacred plan. The two of them were afraid to denounce Yaldabaoth. He displayed to his angels the ignorance within him. He threw the humans out of paradise and cloaked them in thick darkness. The first ruler saw the young woman standing next to Adam and noticed that the enlightened afterthought of life had appeared in her. Yet Yaldabaoth was full of ignorance. So when the forethought of all realizes, she dispatched emissaries and they stole life out of Eve. The first ruler defiled Eve and produced in her two sons, a first and a second, Elohim and Yahweh. Elohim has the face of a bear. Yahweh has the face of a cat. One is just, the other is unjust. He placed Yahweh over fire and wind. He placed Elohim over water and earth. He called them by the names Cain and Abel with a view to deceive. To this day, sexual intercourse has persisted because of the first ruler. He planted sexual desire in the woman who belongs to Adam. Through intercourse, the first ruler produced duplicate bodies, and he blew some of his false spirit into them. He placed these two rulers over the elements so that they might rule over the cave. When Adam came to know the counterpart of his own foreknowledge, he produced a son like a human child. He called him Seth, after the manner of the heavenly race in the eternal realms. Similarly, the mother sent down her spirit which is like her and is a copy of what is in the realm of fullness, for she was going to prepare a dwelling place for the eternal realms that would come down. The human beings were made to drink water of forgetfulness by the first ruler, so they might not know where they had come from. For a time the seed remained and helped, so that when the spirit descends from the holy realm, it may raise up the seed and heal what it lacks, that the entire realm of fullness may be holy and lack nothing. On human destiny... I said to the Savior, Master, will all the souls then be led safely into pure light? He answered and said to me, These are great matters that have arisen in your mind, and it is difficult to explain them to anyone except those of the unshakable race. 
Those upon whom the spirit of life will descend and whom the spirit will empower will be saved and become perfect and be worthy of greatness and be cleansed there of all evil and the anxieties of wickedness, since they are anxious for nothing except the incorruptible alone and concerned that from this moment on without anger, jealousy, envy, desire, or greed for anything. They are affected by nothing but being in the flesh alone, and they wear the flesh as they look forward to a time when they will be met by those who receive them. Such people are worthy of the incorruptible eternal life and calling. They endure everything and bear everything so as to finish the contest and receive eternal life. I said to him, Master, will the souls of people be rejected who have not done these things, but upon whom the power and the spirit of life have descended? He answered and said to me, If the Spirit descends upon them, by all means they will be saved and transformed. Power will descend upon every person, for without it no one can stand. After birth, if the Spirit of life grows and power comes and strengthens that soul, no one will be able to lead it astray with evil actions. But people upon whom the false Spirit descends are misled by it and go astray. I said, Master, where will their souls go when they leave their flesh? He laughed and said to me, The soul in which there is more power than the contemplative spirit is strong. She escapes from evil, and through the intervention of the incorruptible one, she is saved and taken up to eternal rest. I said, Master, where will the soul go of people who have not known to whom they belong? He said to me, The contemptible spirit has grown stronger in such people while they were going astray. This spirit lays a heavy burden on the soul leads her into evil and hurls her down into forgetfulness and the soul leaves the body she is handed over to the authorities who have come into being through the ruler they bind her with chains and throw her into prison they go around with her until she awakens from forgetfulness and acquires knowledge this is how she attains perfection and is saved i said master how can the soul become younger and return into its mother's womb or into the human he was glad when I asked him about this, and he said to me, You are truly blessed, for you have understood. This soul will be made to follow another in whom the spirit of life dwells, and she is saved through that one. Then she will not be thrust into flesh again. I said, Master, where will the soul go of people who had the knowledge but turned away? He said to me, They will be taken to a place where the angels of misery go where there is no repentance. They will be kept there until the day when those who have been blasphemed against the spirit will be tortured and punished eternally. I said, Master, where did the contemptible spirit come from? He said to me, The mother of father is great in mercy, the Holy Spirit in whom every way is compassionate, who sympathizes with you, the afterthought of enlightened forethought. This one raised up the offspring of the perfect generation and raised their thought in the eternal light of the human. When the first ruler realized that these people were exalted above him and could think better than he, he wanted to grasp their thought. He did not know what they surpassed him in thought and that he would be unable to grasp them. He devised a plan with his authorities, who are his powers. Together they fornicated with Sophia, and through him was produced bitter fate. The final fickle bondage. Fate is like this because the powers are fickle. To the present day, fate is harder and stronger than what God's angel demons and all the generations have encountered for from fate have come all inequity and injustice and blasphemy the bondage of forgetfulness and ignorance and all burdensome orders weighty sins and great fears thus all of creation has been binded so that none might know that god is over them all because of the bondage of forgetfulness their sins have been hidden they have been bond with dimensions times and seasons and fate is master of all the first ruler regretted everything that had happened through him once again he made a plan to bring a flood upon the human creation. The enlightened greatness of forethought, however, warned Noah. Noah announces to all the offspring, the human children, but those who were strangers to him did not listen to him. It did not happen the way Moses said. They hid in an ark. Rather, they hid in a particular place, not only Noah, but also many other people from the unshakable race. They entered that place and hid in a bright cloud. Noah knew about his supremacy. With him was the enlightened one who had enlightened them, since the first ruler had brought darkness upon the whole earth. The first ruler formulated a plan with his powers. He sent his angels to the human daughters so they might take some of them and raise offspring for their pleasure. At first they were unsuccessful. When they had proved unsuccessful, they met again and devised another plan. They created a contemptible spirit similar to the spirit that had descended in order to adulterate souls through this spirit. 
The angels changed their appearance to look like the partners of these women and filled the women with the spirit of darkness that they had concocted and with evil. They brought gold, silver, gifts, copper, iron, metal, and all sorts of things. They brought great anxieties to the people who followed them, leading them astray with many deceptions. These people grew old without experiencing pleasure and died without finding truth or knowing the God of truth. In this way, all creation was forever enslaved from the beginning of the world until the present day. The angels took women, and from the darkness they produced children similar to their spirit. They closed their minds and became stubborn through the stubbornness of the contemplated spirit until the present day. Hymn of the Savior Now I, the perfect forethought of all, transformed myself into my offspring. I existed first and went down every path. I am the abundance of light. I am the remembrance of fullness. I went into the realm of great darkness and continued until I entered the midst of the prison. The foundations of chaos shook, and I hid from them because of their evil, and they did not recognize me. Again, I returned a second time and went on. I had come from the inhabitants of light, I the remembrance of forethought. I entered the midst of darkness and the bowels of the underworld, turning to my task. The foundations of chaos shook as though to fall upon those who dwell in chaos and destroy them. Again, I hurried back to the root of my light, so they might not be destroyed before their time. Again, a third time, I went forth. I am the light dwelling in light. I am the remembrance of forethought, so that I might enter the midst of darkness and the bowels of the underworld. I brightened my face with light for the consummation of their realm and entered the midst of their prison, which is the prison of the body. I said, let whoever here arise from deep sleep. A person wept and shed tears. Bitter tears the person wiped away and said, Who is calling my name? From where has my hope come as I dwell in the bondage of prison? I said, I am the forethought of pure light. I am the thought of the virgin spirit who raises you to a place of honor. Arise, remember that you have heard and trace your root, which is I, the compassionate. Guard yourself against the angels of misery, the demons of chaos and all who entrap you, and beware of deep sleep and the trap and the bowels of the underworld. I raised and sealed the persons in luminous water with five seals, that death may not prevail over the person from that moment on. Conclusion. Look, now I shall ascend to the perfect realm. I have finished everything for you in your hearing. I have told you everything for you to record and communicate secretly to your spiritual friends. This is the mystery of the unshakable race. The Savior communicated this to John for him to record and safeguard. He said to him, Cursed be anyone who will trade these things for a gift, for food, drink, clothes, or anything like this. These things were communicated to John in mystery, and at once the Savior disappeared. Then John went to the other students and reported what the Savior had told him. Jesus, the Anointed. Amen. This is the end of the secret book of John. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what these books do, it just kind of fill in the gaps <coughs> that <clears throat> may not be in the Bible. And unfortunately, our enemies, you know, the Vatican have a lot of books. Now, Many of the books that we had kind of interconnected where one left off, the other one picked up. And a lot of those books were destroyed. We have a lot of books that are being held at the Vatican. They decide what we get to see and what we don't see, which is really messed up. But, you know, for now, we just have to make do with the text that we do have. So it's not like we can't learn nothing. We still have the ability to learn. Now, <laughs> these books, you're not going to learn in any church. A church simply will not teach anything like this. Really, it's more of a business. This is why they will go over two, maybe three um scripts and then the rest of it is singing and dancing and the collection plate because they are really a business it's not really a place of learning 
and I think all of us know this from going to church. So it's a good book. It's a good book. And there's a lot more in here that, you know, we can learn over the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, post the link. Anybody that wants to join the panel, you can. Let me just get that link. Okay. Yeah, you're right. They sure did when they became 5013C. That is so true. Oh, thank you, um, Whole Armor. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the app. Yeah, it, it's really a business. It's it's not really a learning institution. It really should be, but it's not. Okay. All right. So, um, Cole Armor, welcome to the panel. Is there anyone else that wants to join? Let me know if you have a problem with the link working. Now, what I thought was amazing is how the demons and the angels <coughs> built. At What's up, everyone? Oh. Okay. Hi, Jamal Bay and Hassani. Welcome. Um, what I thought was amazing was after the angels and the demons put Adam together. Okay, okay somebody, somebody, go ahead and mute yourself. Okay, hi, True Royal. How you doing? I'm trying to mute myself. Excuse me for that. Okay, no problem. It I happened. In, I usually come in and mute. Okay, no, no, you're fine. Now, what I thought was amazing in the whole story was when the angels and demons got finished putting Adam together and they realized he was smarter and stronger than they were. So they grew jealous of him. And what they did was they would start trying to do things to sabotage Adam out of jealousy. And the reason why they grew jealous was because the Most High gave him dominion over this entire planet. And they felt, well, wait a minute, we put him together. He, you know, if it wasn't for us putting him together, he wouldn't be here. We should have dominion over the planet. Well, that's not the way the Most High wanted it. He wanted the man that he made in his own image to have dominion over the earth. And they did not like that. And that was also part of the reason why, um, who we call Satan was at the time, Lucifer. He was the um, angel in heaven. He was the right hand of the most high at that time. He grew jealous and it was a big war in the heavens. And they were all thrown out. You know, um, Lucifer and all of the fallen angels were thrown out. So from that point on, they were set out to sabotage the creation of the Most High. So that's when they came down and started mating 
with the women that they found attractive <coughs> and they brought forth animals. And it's just like now, remember he said in the last days, women are going to give birth to animals and look at all the Zika babies that were born and all of these babies that came out of Fukushima, they got all these deformities and everything. And we can still see that today, not only from the fallen angels, but even today you see women birthing monsters, these things coming out with nine limbs and tails and everything else. And that's not the way it was supposed to be. But see, the blood is no longer pure. And because it's no longer pure, these things are now happening on the earth. But yes, whatever Adam inherited got passed down to us because we are still part of that same bloodline that Adam came out of. So Adam is no longer with us, but we are the ones that are supposed to be the keepers of the earth. But, you know, right now we, we've been hijacked by the group that's running it now that just steals everything in sight and try to make us all believe they are righteous. And we know there's no righteousness in any of these people at all. So I like how he spoke about the female, <coughs> the female spirits that are there. And these female spirits just came about just from the thought of the Most High. He brought forth these female spirits. And Sophia at one time was the highest female spirit, but she fell out of favor because she started trying to do everything herself without the Most High. So that's when she ran into a problem. She tried to give birth without doing it the proper way. And she ended up giving birth to a monster. <laughs> so, and she fell out of favor for a while, but she was able to repent and come back. Now the most high did let her come back, but by the time she was able to come back, Barbello, the other female um, spirit is now over her. So this is really interesting because it kind of fills in the gap of things that we did not get going through the book of Genesis, which I love Genesis. I, that is one book I listen to all day and all night and, and never get tired of it. Never. Shabbat Shalom, Lioness. I'm going to post a link. Anybody else that wants to join the panel, please do. So those of you that are on the panel, um, whole armor. What do you think? From what you heard? <laughs> That's the first time I've heard it. Really? That yeah, that 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 deep before. So mm -hmm. I really couldn't um expound on it. I have to like read more up oh, more absolutely. of it. But uh, it does put other uh scriptures into a uh, perspective like you know wrestle not against flesh and blood against the principalities and and how um it talks about uh in revelations how um that great dragon uh struck down to earth like a bolt of lightning and all his angels with they they walked the earth right they walked the earth and uh they place their corrupted seed in mankind and the, the corrupted seed became world powers and and corrupted the, the minds of many deceived many that's why we get uh even in the book of enoch where it talks about how the angels taught witchcraft and alchemists and and um Yep. Yeah, and and teaching women how to put on um, makeups and colors and stuff like that. All of that came from the fallen. Exactly. All of that came from the fallen. And, and see, when when I was trying to tell everybody, you know, because when you look at the Egyptian like drawings that. on the wall, make sure you mute yourself. Okay. Good. 
<coughs> when people see the Egyptians and they got their faces all painted up with the makeup and nails polished and everything, you don't realize that all came from the fallen angel. Do you realize wearing makeup on your face, even women to this day, that is not something that came from the most high. The most high made us beautiful. You know, the tribe of Judah is known for being beautiful, the most beautiful tribe. He did not give us makeup. That makeup and making your face up actually came from the fallen angels. Exactly right. Even until this very day, uh, you can look back into the uh, ancient tribes of Africa where they still wear uh, paints on their face. And, and then that trickled over into the uh, the Western world. But that was the uh, the source of that was mm -hmm. from the, the the ancients implementing that into the world. Yes. And and various other things like even even weaponry and yes. war, yes, and gunpowder and stuff. That that wasn't anything that that civilized indigenous people was doing. That was the corruption of the other entities implementing that into the minds of men. <laughs> that is very true. And the Book of Enoch really goes into detail about that. Okay, um, True Royal. True Royal, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. um, I, I, I'm here. Um, I, I'll let the other brother talk because I'm always running my mouth. No, 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 no. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Oh yeah, go ahead. What did you think from what you heard? Oh, it was it was powerful. It was powerful, and um, my husband was able to listen um, to it as well. And um, I had heard you um, briefly mention that um, about um, Adam was um, put together by these angels, but I never heard it in detail. Mm -hmm. And um, as I was reading the comments, um, um. You know, a lot of people were just, you know, utterly shocked or they were even talking about what I'm trying to tell my family or possibly friends um, that we're not learning the truth. And my husband's been going to church off and on. And I noticed that every single time he come home, he pissed. Mm -hmm. And um, thank goodness he doesn't, you know, have a resentment because I don't go go anymore. And um what I'm trying to say to folks is that if you are concerned about family and friends, um, do like possibly like I do. I'll play. I'll, I'll be listening to the Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters. And I notice he never rejected. He'll listen to it. He'll even ask questions about it. Mm -hmm. I bought the I bought the book of Eaton and um, I looked up one day and the book was gone and it was upstairs. So I left it up there. I left it up there. Uh -huh to just proselytize and push stuff on people don't do that just keep you keep seeking on your own and um just lay the material around if a person is earnestly also on their own journey they're gonna they're gonna reach out to it now this is something that i want to say that has been happening to me now i was not raised in the church and i'm seeing now more and more because i used to feel out of place with everybody that i'm glad now because I'm always questioning certain things and I have been questioning. I said, I know it's just more than just this book and people would just, they wouldn't say nothing. They would just give me a crazy stare. I didn't care. So I kept praying that I did not want to be fooled. And so far, all of my prayers have been answered, but this would happen to me a few short weeks ago. Um, there is somebody on YouTube and I'm not gonna mention their name, been trying to tell me that all of this is a total lie that a group of white people got together and they wrote the entire book of the Bible and made up every single thing. Well, first of all, the white, the white man don't have the intelligence to write. Mm -hmm. No, I already knew that. I already knew that. I don't argue with people. And, and number two, Queen, why would he write a Bible against himself? Yeah. I didn't argue about it at all. Some people can be very deceitful. 
So they send me some material and saying, well, when you read this, you'll learn the truth. I never read it at all. So this is what ended up happening. I'm, 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 I'm sub to the Black Education TV. And it turned out that uh, for the last three weeks, um, I, they finally stopped. What they did was they put up, damn it, let me go back over here, that clipped over. They put up. Shabbat Shalom, Gab Talk. They put up, they put up. Shalom, Shalom. On the go. Black TV, what they did was they put up, um, let's see, where did it start? One, two, three, four, five, six different videos pertaining to the very thing that I was talking about, how these um, these Greeks and Romans sat down to manipulate the original Bibles of the book and even how they almost even left out uh, revelations and they give you the whole breakdown, what you call it, the Council of Nice. Council of Nice, yeah, not Nicaea or Nice. Uh -huh. You talk about all of that, that right there, because I'm seeking and I continue to pray, it was it landed right in my lap, and I and I li and I didn't listen to it just once, I probably five or six times, and I was like, damn. So, so you have to even watch your own trying to manipulate you because they want you to think the way that, that they want you to think right. and stuff, and you're gonna have to be your own free thinker and do your own research. You can't even take what your family say, husband or wife say. Do your own research, and I'm a firm believer in the power of prayer it'll literally land on your on your lap. So I would encourage anybody, if they want to get a breakdown of all the deception behind it, if people don't know, like I didn't, go to the Black Education TV because uh, Deborah and her husband did an excellent job of breaking it, um, breaking it down and all the manipulation in it and um, everything else. I just I just wanted to add, add that. That was it. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that will tell you the Bible came from the white man. The, the white man does not have the intelligence to sit down and write nothing like that. Number two, the Bible speaks against him. Why would he write something and talk against himself? That's where you do your own thinking. Right, you know, and, and that's the thing. And, and here's the thing, Queen. You saw all of the biblical videos that I put out, right? Mm -hmm. Every time I put those videos out, the naysayers go silent. Mm -hmm. Now, when I put that video out about the church in Savannah, do you know I had people mad at me? <laughs> now, you would think people would be like, okay, this was the 1700s when this church was built. And they put on 40 pews in that church Hebrew writing. Mm -hmm. Do you know there are still people saying, that nah, we ain't no damn Hebrews. That that nah, that's fake. I, I, how do you know what that says? And all, you know, it's it's always something they want to go to to mm -hmm. refute what's being shown. But mm -hmm. I'm finding each time when they do that, they're looking more and more silly. Now, yeah. how is it that I'm finding all of these biblical locations? And they're exactly in the spot that the Bible says they're in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And mm -hmm. I'm finding all kinds of things that ties right back to us. Those, you know, many of those cities that I'm showing you, those are where our forefathers lived. Mm -hmm. Those are the exact cities they lived in. They worship there. The old ancient synagogues are still in the locations, the whole nine yards, you know. But I will still have people say, I did the research and it ain't real. True. No, I, I just people, don't know what to make of that. Well, you know what? That's when I go back to saying, you know, I often say on my channel, I have been affected by the system. And it's, a ve it's very frustrating uh, when you know you saying the wrong words to stuff. Um, and I will also say I don't um, speak in the absolutes. And I think some people haven't came to terms with their selves that they have been affected by the system and don't even realize that 
they are thinking like the enemy. That's how we've been in their schools. Right. And they, they have shaped us in such a way where um, we're thinking like them and like them. And I was even telling my husband um, um, about an hour ago, I said, even in the direction that we read, they deliberately started because we, we read from um, we, lead, we read from right. Um, left to right. You have to write. And we're really supposed to read the opposite because right. when you when you read in the correct way, you're using more capacity of your brain. And and um, now this all came to me. Some stuff just come to me. You already know that I get visions and all of that. And I said, OK, I understand it. They said, damn, these people are this smart that we got to start undoing certain things. And and I can even feel it within myself. I'm highly dyslexic. And I'm like, OK, I can feel like something was put upon me. So I'm not embarrassed about it or anything. I'm realizing something was done to us. Why was it done to us? Because they know that we chosen. We know that they know that. And then what we'll do when I say we think like them, they we got these white folks want to scientifically prove that there is a God scientifically that's how they whole mixed up thinking is but then they are contradiction because i i listened to um it's a bunch of videos out called unforbidden archaeology uh -huh. and when they get these when they get these grants to go do their digs and, and when they want to do something unquote biblical do you know the very thing that they don't believe in they have to refer to the bible to go to those locations yes and queen you know what they have dug up many black artifacts that are being hidden from us. Mm -hmm. They know that we are attached to many of those digs that they're doing, but they simply will not show you a lot of their finds because those finds look like us. Now, this is what they also no, did, Lisa. No, no, they, no. Had, they had a number, uh, I remember distinctly was a white woman. She did a dig, it totally debunked um, um, evolu um, um, evolution and um the government start making threats against this woman yeah, the I, I know you're talking they took, about they yeah. took all they took all her money mm -hmm. and a number of a number of these and these are white folks a number of them went to different countries and hid and took those artifacts in fact one of them went to south america where they have those um what we call them big statues that they call over there them huge statues they clearly black men uh -huh. they humongous and he was able to find out who these people is so he set up his own little um sort of like a museum um and and um he can never come back to this country because they want us to think the way they want us to think and some of our own want to think that way i would not drive myself crazy trying to force it down their throat because you got to stay on your journey but the one thing that my husband said to me and he was right he said, you got to save yourself first at the end of the day. At yep. the end of the day. What were you going to say, whole armor? I was going to uh, add um, not just the uh, the archaeological finds, but that rabbit hole goes a whole lot deeper than that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you have our classical music. You know, our ancient classical music, even our, our artwork. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of our culture has something to do with our music and our artwork. They also take in all of that, yes. you know, and not even just the uh, the archaeological finds and digs. But what about cave systems that have been dug by our ancients? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of aqueducts right. that are now finding right. that are underneath the ground. You know, and there's a whole water system there. Right. I was, uh, I caught a YouTube video uh, where they had discovered several cave systems right here in the U.S. One that I know of in, in uh, Illinois that was uh, dug out and excavated by our ancient black people where they were finding tablets and uh, pottery with our ancient writings on it right here in the U.S. Oh, yeah. You know, many of the places are still named after the Bible. You know, Moab is in Utah. And you have Mount Ephraim. 
and all these places are still here. And a lot of people don't realize it's the same place they're talking about in the Bible. And, you know, they tried to rename all of these places and they just simply got tired of doing it and just left the names there. Right. But my, my, my point. I can still find a lot of the ancient towns. I can still locate them. And then this is why I try to do my presentations to show you these places are still standing on this earth. Uh, Hassani, were you gonna say something? Yeah, actually I was looking for a, a article that I wrote on Cora to, to prove that our people are who we say that they are. And I'm gonna post it inside the comment section just in case you guys want to read it, I highly suggest it's read. Okay, I would definitely read it. All the proof is right there, I'm telling you. Oh, I know. Uh, you know what, um, brother? All we have been doing for years is presenting truth. And it, it just seems like some people just already got their minds made up. That they don't want to believe it no matter what you present to them. And all I have to say in those cases Remember, the Most High said only a remnant is going to make it. Yeah. You know? And we have to accept that. Sometimes it's going to be people that we're close to. It's going to be people in our own families that will be excluded. And we just have to accept it. We have no choice but to accept it. Yeah, right. Dig but this. Dig this right, right quick. Morpheus has said it best in the Matrix. Right. He told Neo, he said, you have to remember that the people that are in the cage, they will do everything in their power to defend the very cage that they're in. Mm -hmm. You know, you got people who who will wake up to the truth, the Neos of the world, the elect, the teachers, the warriors that are fine and seek the truth, seeking asking and knocking that's what the elect do that's right. what we do that's how you find out who's who by understanding that spirit those who seek the truth those who love the truth those who will will dig down into it and then you have those who are naturally sleep those people that the most high has said that he will cause them to have a great delusion right and you remember, and also, brother, he's going to confound people because they are just simply not what he wants. So it's like you'll read something and they'll read the same thing and they'll get something totally different from it. And a lot of people don't realize that's really done on purpose. Right. They'll read it for face value and stop there. They won't dig any further. They only just read what's on the surface and say, hey, that's exactly what that means. No, that is not exactly what that means because it's multifaceted. We are multidimensional people. So our world is multidimensional. Exactly. The Bible is multidimensional. Mm -hmm. So you have to go dig deeper. And you have to question. remember, um, I'm going to let you talk, Gab Talk, because I definitely want to hear from you. And okay. you have to remember, you know, the Bible was done in a whole different era but it was intended only for a certain few to understand it. And that's what we're seeing. That's exactly what we're seeing today. That's why the Messiah, Hamashiach, he always say, let, let them who have eyes to see, you know, let them see. And that's let those who right. have ears hear, let them hear. Because not right. everybody has that. That is correct. Go ahead, Thank Cap you. Talk. I want to hear from you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, peace to the family. Um, or shalom is the correct shalom. term, right? Shabbat shalom. 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 Shabbat shalom. Yes. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm listening, and I'm not versed, and I hope this wasn't like a closed discussion. No. Um, but I was I was definitely enjoying um, Lisa when I I just turned on maybe twenty minutes ago, fifteen twenty minutes ago, and you would kind of giving your, your, uh, an exegesis about the scripture and the woman having a child. And I was enjoying that interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, the, the most I know about Hebrew Israelites is kind of what I get off YouTube. I have no up close and personal uh, relationships with uh, brothers and sisters, not by design, just kind of just hasn't 
presented itself that close mm-hmm. in my life. But um, question for for you guys on the panel: um, Does is it in the Hebrew Israelite faith the belief kind of like is it like the Christian Church a little bit or no? No. It's Am pure. I wrong? It's, no. Um, it's pure. Like what the Christian church has is the doctrines of devils. And I can prove to you with scripture right now where the Messiah basically denounced everything that they are and would come to do because of what they did to us. Because he told us the things that they're going to do to us, they're going to put us out of the synagogues. They're going to kill us. And they're going to think that by killing us, they do God a favor. And so if you look back in history in the first century, towards the fifth century and even more than that to this day, you know, what the Europeans and the Christians have done, you know, in the name of God to our people is hell. And he said that I didn't authorize that. They don't know me and they don't know my father. And if they don't know him, that means that they're not under the covenant. They don't follow the law, statutes and commandments. Christianity okay. does none of that. And okay. you know what, Gap Talk, you know what else? Um, and thank you for that, Brother Hassani. Um, another thing that I want to say is Christianity came from our slave masters. You know, that reason alone turned me off of Christianity. Uh, Christianity was brought on to us by force. And in some cases, it was beaten into our people to accept it. Under the rule of the Roman Catholic. Exactly. There were people. There were people back when it was being introduced that did resist and didn't want it and they were killed so okay so let me uh, clarify let me go ahead i want to clarify you go ahead and finish but i want to kind of clarify so you Um, clearly can see that it came from the slave master and only certain doctrines were allowed to be taught to the slave slave love your master yeah turn the other cheek Okay, so they set it up where no matter what dirt they did to us, we as Christians had to accept it. So the most high is not in that. That's nothing but straight up evil. Yeah. It's nothing but in those churches every Sunday. Okay, got it. Now, what I was. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want him to ask his questions if you don't mind. Go ahead. Ask your next question. Okay. Go go ahead, Cat. Okay. Um, so because definitely what I hear from the Hebrew Israelites, like on the streets, uh like like the brothers in, in New York, yes. like it's it's way stronger than what I grew I grew up in the church till I was about twelve and mm-hmm. then like moving on into Islam. We all have, brother. We all yeah. Have. All right. So <laughs> So, so, um, definitely like, I, I definitely recognize a stronger gospel. Um, and it looks like it removed, removed a lot, if not all of what the slave master, the, the, the spell that the slave master put on the scriptures. Mm-hmm. And so I think what I'm driving at is like, when I talk to Christian brothers and sisters, it's, it's like, they, they believe that they are only going to make it like they're the only ones that's going to make it right and like and they don't recognize brother you know how arrogant that is to walk around and say that yeah okay and so you guys don't do that too no and and okay i just want to say one more thing um gab talk the most high did not say i choose the christians right it's not in the bible right that's nowhere in the text Right. About what you were saying about you know claiming oh we're we're saved and we're the only ones that's gonna yeah. make it. that's an absolute yeah. lie. What we were told to do by the most high is to seek our own salvation with fear and trembling because none of right. us, you know, all of us have sinned. None okay. of us are perfect before him. He could do anything that he wants to do. You know, we're at his mercy, literally, you know, and that's why okay. we have to follow the law, statutes, and commandments, you know. To, to be deserving, you know, of that mercy. Because if we don't, we're showing him, like, screw you. We don't care about what you did, and that's what the Christian church teaches. Right. Okay. So do you guys, is it, do you accept the Old and the New Testament? 
Yes. I accept the whole thing. The, the whole thing. thing. And there's, there's, right. there's many hidden books, you know, that they're right. um, congruent with both the old and the new. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of get like a lot of it. Uh, 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 a lot of what I hear taught uh, is congruent with what I learned in the Nation of Islam. Um, a lot. A lot of it. And um, so I'm. I'm the kind of brother. I uh, I'm like a bird. I, I would say I, I kind of go and I look for things that are um, congruent so I can figure out how to unite because there's so much information. Um, it is. It is. It's so much information. Like, I, I don't think we would live to, to, to get to the bottom of it all, but we can do our best. So I'm always trying to see if the people preaching certain doctrines are adverse to unification, even though the person may not be up to speed with regard to their understanding of scripture or their faith no brother you know what it's about repentance and okay. it's about, absolutely it's about coming to the most high he wants us to come at our own free will this is not supposed to be forced it we're not supposed to be guilt into this at all mm -hmm. and it's all about learning we're all learning you know, and that's what you have to understand. Right. You know, it might right. be some that have a little more knowledge than others, but we are all learning. And then when we get into the kingdom, we're getting a new covenant. So it's going to be learning all over again. <laughs> okay. So right. we're right. never right. going to stop right. learning in this walk. Yeah. Like, um, like I, I thought that I quit pretty much everything that, you know, I'm not supposed to be doing. And then it's like, I'm, I just figured out like, cause I, I used to vape. And then I realized that, wait a minute, you know, this stuff that I'm taking in, it, it alters my state of mind. And that could be just as bad as like marijuana or something like that. So, you know, I had to kick that to the yeah. side too, but right. you, you're always learning. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Would, you know, having... would you like to say anything? Rochelle? Oh yeah, hi. How you doing? How you doing, sister? I'm fine. No, I just, I, I just jumped on because I heard the brother was asking a question about oh. who is right, and I, I used to go to the, um, the, the Church of God in Jesus Christ in Manhattan, and I just, um, I, I, I don't, I, um, I was gonna say that we're not, the, we're not the same because the, the Christian church, the Christian church has been lying to us about our history and they're they want us to um like you were saying forgive our our mass our slave master and turn the other cheek and everything and the bible teaches us to separate so it's whole it's two different things that's what i was just i was gonna yeah. say but then y'all explained it like better so yeah the the the, the yeah. church situation is is a, a a crazy dynamic thing within itself like the the whole uh pastors bishops deacons they too do not realize that they are puppets under a puppet master they do not realize that they too were conditioned if y'all if y'all uh checked out that movie the birth of a nation with nate how they geared him and raised him to be a pastor in, a, in in the white church, which is the White House. You know what I mean? Check that movie out. Oh, I have seen it. Mm -hmm. That that goes back mm -hmm. to how the, the the Christianity came from Great Britain and the UK from the migration of the pilgrims and and Christopher Columbus. We didn't the when you say uh Lisa when they said um uh slaves love thy master those was the scriptures that that they kept pounding in the on the heads of of the ignorant for those who was not allowed to read english right and yeah. and brother, also um gab talk um also when those black ministers back during the time our people were still in bondage they would be white overseers coming to their services to make sure they did not tell those slaves who they were. 
Yeah. And just stuck with the basic, you know, turn your other cheek, slaves love your master, you know, and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, and if they deviated from that, they would get lynched. And that's right. That, what that's was, a condition that they had to uh they had to uphold. Yes. You know, even unto this so, even unto this very day. Exactly. So the church, in my opinion, is very white supremacist. That, okay. That's how I see it. That's why I don't follow it. it. It is not something that really our people should be into at all. Why would you want to hang on to something that was given by your slave masters? The Bible never mm -hmm. taught Christianity. It only teaches birthrights, covenants, promises to a people. Mm -hmm. He never taught... He didn't, uh, uh, Yahweh Shai didn't never say, I, I'm a Christian. He no. said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by through me. Exactly. That's, that's what he said. And then he also segued the covenant of the people. He said, Go, he told the, the disciples, do not go unto the house of the Gentiles, but rather go unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Absolutely, he sure did. Uh, Queen True Royal, mm -hmm. you want to say anything? Yeah, what I wanted to say is um, a couple, couple of weeks ago, I was watching a video and there were some Hebrew Israelite brothers, really young brothers up in um, Seattle. Uh huh. We were in downtown Seattle and there was um, an older couple, black woman, black man, and uh, they were very, very polite to these young brothers. And the, sis the sister, she was just, she was very open and she wanted, you could tell she really was very open to learning the, more the truth about the word. So as she was talking to um, these young men, one of them act like she literally did not exist. And another brother was more open to her and um, she wanted to show a scripture or something in the younger brother was like, you don't even touch this Bible. You are not even allowed to teach it all. And you know it. Was and that GMS? <laughs> you, 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 that, 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 that's what I got. Last time we talked, I said that I got into it. I had to post something to some camps because they was doing stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and, one time I was on the street and it was a um, woman and she was from the Philippines. Now, she was melanated and had an afro, but she was from the Philippines. And she was simply walking up to say, am I Judah? I got African roots. I came from the Philippines. And we know Judah is in all four corners of yeah. the earth. And yeah. he had the woolly hair and everything. And they said, where are you from? She said, I'm from the Philippines, but I think I'm Judah. And they said, no, you're Moab. And I'm looking at that is like, oh, no, 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 no. I said, this is Judah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, that... they mixed in with all the nations. And oh. this woman was, she, in fact, she was darker than me. Right. That is so retarded. Said, and yeah. I was let you know, Judah's going to look like the other nations. We already know that. So I wanted, to, I wanted to finish up. Finish off real quick. I wanted to finish off real quick. And, um. <laughs> And, and the brother, the brother was so nasty and so rude to to the sister, and um, and I and I know that th there are people out there seeking, and they probably, you know, some people may not go any further. That'll just stop them. People do not know how dangerous this is. What they doing, and it's a statement that my dear father used. A person can get some knowledge and get very radical with it and run with it. And and um, and the way they proselytize to people, they, they can turn them off, turn, turn them off, shut them down. And they don't even know what to what to do. You know what I'm saying? And I and, yeah. and, and, and it left a nasty feeling in me. But I knew, OK, I'm not listening to that. I'm going to I'm going to continue to 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 keep seeking. I don't I don't let people. I'm putting this message out. I don't let people stop me because I'm, it's like, okay, wow, I, I didn't got shot down. It is utterly to your, to make it to the kingdom for you to seek on your own, even when people display that. 
So even when it comes to man on this planet, man is flawed. And we even our own can be flawed too as well because they think, okay, I didn't got this knowledge. You women or whoever you are, y'all don't, y'all can't have this at all. And I, I, I don't want, I don't want to be personally the catalyst into saying something um, um, in the wrong way. Cause some people can hold on your every word. And because of, because you're not being humble, forget being proud. We should even leave proud out of our vocabulary as far as I'm yeah. concerned, because you, yeah. you, you're you you going to run into something else where you go, oh, I had that wrong. It's a, it's a lot of things I didn't got wrong. And I will get up and make a video and say, you know what? I said that wrong. And somebody said, oh, that's brave of you. I'm not trying to be brave. I don't want to lead my people in the wrong direction. I'm out here seeking. Don't hope. Don't, I, I don't speak in the absolutes. I'm seeking just like everyone else, hopefully. Right, right, right. right. You know what? There's one thing wrong with that. You know what? What I want to do quick the people that are turning off those that are approaching them, they're going to pay for that. They will. There is a price for turning away a potential person that could have been in the kingdom. They're not going to get away with that. Let, Go ahead, let, um, Hassani. Yeah, so what I was reading uh, one of the books of the Apocrypha one time, and I saw it says that, you know, many of our people will, they'll, they'll have to die in the last days because of their pride, because this is going to be great pride and great boasting. And I see that inside a lot of the camps. Like, um, you don't tell people that, and especially because that whole Moab thing is so retarded. That's there, there were people in the Middle East. That's not Asian people. Is is not true. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and, and like I said, we uh, remember we have gone through this captivity for centuries. So quite naturally, we have mixed in with the other nations. He already knew that was going to happen. So there are going to be many that are Judah that will have Asian features. There's going to be some that are Judah that have Arab features. We've we blended in with these people. Yeah, like me. Like, you know. Can, can, can I say something right quick? Yes, go right ahead, brother. I wanted to uh, explain uh, to the sister why, why that is and why they do that on a more of a, uh, a natural plane. Why do we overlook drunks? Because we know they're drunk when they're acting belligerent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People can be drunk by knowledge too. The same, the same way our young men and women, they come up poor. As soon as they get them a little bit of change in their pocket, they don't know how to act. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of these Hebrew camps, you have to like really understand it and, and give them a pass because these camps, these, these are young men and they learning a very small veneer of the truth. And once they get a little taste and hint of the light, they get knowledge drunk. And so they get to saying things and doing things that they really don't understand what they saying, you know? And so you have to yeah. always keep that in mind too, that they not really, they, they, what they're doing, they're in a situation where parrot syndrome where one parrot say something the other parrot say something and he's only doing that because he thinks that that's right to do when that's not right to do he, right. he, so, you know, to do it is up to the most high on how we get judged so all we can do is rest that in his hands and you know unfortunately those things are going to happen we're not going to be able to stop it from happening but hopefully even if somebody walks away feeling negative I hope they will still try to pursue the truth. I mean, that's all we can pray for. Exactly um, right. Go hey, ahead, at least the seed was planted. Yes. Yes. Um, go ahead, Gab Talk. Were you gonna say something? No, I was just agreeing with the with the brother that we we uh kind of involve ourselves in a lot of intellectual um I've heard it referred to as in, as intellectual masturbation sometimes. Uh huh. Uh, with all of the information that we can collect. So uh, it's no wonder to me that the Bible um, and many scriptures uh, really uh, or, or ancient writings say that the righteous people are marked by humility and meekness. Mm -hmm. and, and so like 
and this that's what I hear going on on this on the show, and I, I'm like real appreciative of it. Actually, um, I've, I've been in discussions like this, and it's usually somebody just trying to convert uh, me to think as they think, being overpowering, to, and yeah, like like oh, you, you know, like ramping up their tones if it sounds like I'm not in accord. You know what I mean. Um, just kind of enslaving me a little bit, uh, or just enslaving people. It's not just me. I, I just and I remember being that way with my Islam before, and it and it took a gro- a growth to 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 come out of that, and it and it may have took took a few years, as a matter of fact, uh, for me to understand that that is not the way of God, and that's my perspective. I don't believe that that's the way of God. Well, you know. Uh, the universe me, is big. Off, for me, I got hauled off to church by my parents. So mm-hmm. when I got into the Christian church, it's not like I had a say in it. You know, I was still yeah, a child. Yeah. You know, I was raised in the church. I was taken there as an infant. So I didn't have much say until one day um, my mother just said to me, get up, get dressed. We're going to church. And I just had to look at her and just say no. I knew I was going to get that ass beaten, but I had to just stand there and say no. And for from that point on, I did not go back to the church. And I know, you know, it's hard. You know, it takes sometimes it takes courage to just stand up and say no. You're not going to take me back in there. It's just something did not feel right about it. I'm glad you I said that. Put my finger on it, but. Something even in my young years just didn't feel right about it. I'm glad you said that. (laughs) This is how we understand the difference, right, between world knowledge and spiritual knowledge, right? The influences of the world and the influences of the Holy Spirit, right? So you have the world where they're teaching and 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 preaching and trying to uh convert people and arguing and arguing and arguing trying to convince everybody that they're right my truth is right this is the truth i'm speaking the truth and blah 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 oh yeah my, my mother was theory. very upset with me and in fact you know what you're, you know what you're saying is correct now my mom was very upset with me and what she did in the beginning she would come back home because it was a couple of um, other girls in the church that were my age. And she she would say, so-and-so's in church every Sunday and they're not complaining about it. So she would do things like, oh, <laughs> you know, and so-and-so and so-and-so who you, your same age, they were in church this past Sunday. You know, she would do things like that. Then she suddenly stopped. And I guess she realized she was not going to change my mind so she stopped doing that. But she tried to manipulate me and tried to guilt trip me into going right. back into the church. But right. I, I just didn't fall for it. Right. Because it wasn't in you to do that. It's not in those who to, to do that, because the the scripture says many are called a few are chosen. Now, who's doing the choosing? The Holy Spirit is doing the cho- choosing because it, 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 it come and goes. That's scriptorial too. It take those and plant itself in those that are going to be pliable to learning and, and finding out the truth. The, the seeking out the truth is the natural thing. It happens organically yes. where you will have the 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 premise to ask certain hard questions that the church will not answer. You know what I mean? Seek out the truth that the church will not reveal. Knock on the doors that the churches will fail to open. Mm -hmm. So then you start to realize, well, wait a minute. Then you start to read the scripture where it need not any man teach you, but the Holy Spirit will show you of all things, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But then I, wanna, you I wanted to ask you know, uh, Do you know when I was five years old, before when I was still in the church, I used to go to Sunday school and they gave us these pamphlets and we would go through it, you know, for our lessons. Do you know the name Yah was in there 
And I said, how come we can't say, don't say it? This is what yeah. Jesus was telling me. Don't say it. <laughs> we say, God, Lord, and Jesus, don't say that. I said, well, why is it in here if we're not allowed to say it? Right, don't like say that. Don't like say issue. It. Like it was something like it was a bad word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wanted like, to add something real quick so we wouldn't lose sight of something that one of the brothers said. Now, this is just for me personally about this very incident that I was talking about how this brother had treated this much older sister, old enough to be his mother. Uh-huh. I'm not giving nobody no pass Yeah. when they purposely throw off negative energy and be that nasty because this stuff is that serious to me. It is. In the way that I picture it, just imagine you got the unquote pearly gates. We're going to use that for an example. And the creator is basically saying, you can't come in here because then he put a, put, put something back in your brain, which you had did way back in, in and you purposely did that. So you, you, you're not coming in here. You're not coming in here. And in fact, you see all these people that you led astray behind you. Once you found out the total truth, you did not take your behind back and go to the best of your ability to correct that. I'm not giving nobody no pass. This stuff is that serious to me. It is. Yeah, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I didn't want to make it seem like I was given. No, we can't baby you know. nobody on this. This stuff is right. that serious. It is that serious because what I want to say to y'all, and I'll say it as coded as possible. When you experience hell, then you would know why I'm speaking in the fashion that I'm speaking in. You don't want to experience that. You don't even want the yo know, the person you hate the most to experience that. You say you would until you encounter that and it's like, okay, this is real. This is real. This is nothing to play with. And 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 when I when I imagine that, if I possibly led a people astray and I look behind me and I see all these thousands of people, that that that'll change your whole perspective. We can't babysit people on this and stuff and, and stuff like that when it comes to the to the word. We have no time. There's no time yeah. to be playing with this. Yeah, and I, I was trying to get to this. Mm-hmm. I was trying to get to this I got because you. um what James 3 and 1 says is that you know many of us should not teach because we get judged more harshly. For doing that and if people are just doing that and they're just running away with things that they're saying and they're trusting in their own understanding you know and they don't have a good grip like me i i I think i've been shown a lot of stuff that i like to share but i've held back on creating a channel and really just likewise, stuff likewise. because i have more to learn oh yeah yeah you know what um queen i used to find most of the grandstanding people in the christian church and, you know, just like you come across the Christians and they'll say, well, I got a personal relationship with the most high. I was like, first of all, he didn't, tell your, he didn't tell your ass to have no personal relationship with them. But, you know, they're trying to make themselves like they got something over you and they really don't. Mm-hmm. And I, right about that, Lisa. Like, I hate that grandstanding. I, and, my my um, uncle. Uh huh. Y'all can find him online too. Bishop Gregory Newman has a huge church. And I can remember going down to Arizona every summer and we would be in my grandmother's living room having a good time. We would encourage her to get up and dance. And when they would come over, it would be like this snobbish attitude, your nose down everyone. And so I took Christians as being negative people because I wasn't raised in the church. And and everybody had to cut off the music, had to sit a wor- certain way, talk a certain way. And I'm thinking my grandmother, the oldest one in the room, and they treating her like that. So I never had good experiences. It's like the other night we, me and my husband was talking about, because um, he was raised in the church. The few times I would go to church, I would see people, unquote, talking in tongues, kicking and bucking up in the floor. And I'm looking at this six or seven years old like, that that's fake. That ain't that ain't real. And then my husband even mentioned about when people put the hands on po- people. Oh, you heal. They got the healing. They got with, the healing. With the blessed the- oil. <laughs> got the, got, the, got the, the virgin olive oil in the hands. Yeah, that's oh, you know, when I used to be little, when I was little, 
And oh man, this also made my mom mad because you know, back in the day, they used to have these ministers on TV. They were so phony. Me, I watched them as a form of entertainment. Well, it, back then they had Reverend Ike. Now listen, he, oh, used, to have, he used to have these uh, testimonials on TV. So what he would do is he would have people in wheelchairs, people in gurneys coming in the, you know, in his church. Oh, oh, I need healing. Oh, I can't see. I lost my sight a week ago. <laughs> he would put his hands on him. Girl, he would pick up a piece of raw meat. Here's the cancer. I got the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I used to almost be on the floor laughing. And my mom would get so tired of me, she would come in the room and yell, go outside and play. <laughs> hey, I was what? screaming in front of that TV. I was laughing in the heart. I knew that mess was phony. He would be holding up. I said, that's a piece of beef. <laughs> I, I got the cancer. <laughs> hey, hey, when I was coming up in church, we were, we went to this one church and they had caught the Holy Spirit and whatnot. And they got to praying out in front of the pulpit and uh, uh, the pastor would come down and lay hands on, on, on all the people. And they bring out newspaper and lay out on the floor. And the pastor would say, we're going to have y'all spit up all these demons y'all got. And the people got to spitting and hacking up stuff all on the floor on the newspaper. <laughs> like, what the, what the world is this? And then I, I was a kid, so I, I didn't I didn't know no better. So I wanted to see what a demon looked like. So I got up walked up there and by the pulpit and looked at the newspaper and looked at all this spit and hack all over the floor. I was like, oh, okay, that's must what a demon looked like. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> do, y'all, do anybody, did anybody um see that video where that pastor o- o- over over in Africa told, told the congregation to go outside and start eating grass? Did yes. anybody see that? There what? Was one, yes. There was one back in 2012. Mm-hmm. That made his congregation drink rat poison over in Africa, and they all died. Wow! Like 2012, he said, "Oh, you got to believe in God. You got to trust Him. If you drink this, you won't be affected by it." So they all grabbing yeah. it and drinking it, trying to show that, "Oh, no matter what I drink, God is going to save me." They all died. Mm-hmm. Oops! I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Did y'all see that I remember. that, that uh, call itself walking on water? He was going to show the congregation. It's a lot of silliness. Now, my uncle, I had an Poor uncle people. that had a church over in Trenton, um, uh, Hamilton, New Jersey. And a lot of my family members were members at his church when he was the pastor. When he left, this pastor took over and he walks the bench. Did you ever see them do that in the Christian church? The minister walked the bench? Walk yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I hey. Heard of that term. Yeah. Hey, hey. Walk the hey, bench. This this pastor now walks the bench. Like while the people are sitting there, he gets up on the bench and walks right between them, walking on top of the benches. I, I, I actually live with somebody who actually did that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah. whether to laugh, brother. Should I laugh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I am. <laughs> yeah, it's a hey, family, family, this Gab, this Gab, at least I appreciate your show. I'm, I'm going to step off. I'm going to still be listening, though. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank y'all. Shalom. Shalom. Wow. Shalom, brother. Yeah, that is some craziness, but yeah, that's what this dude do. I said, so what happens if he slips and fall? I said, if they slip and fall, I'm going to be in there screaming. <laughs> <laughs> no, he dripping sweat all over everybody. Yeah, you know. Hacking and spitting. But if you ain't never seen it before, just pull up a video, walk the bench, and you'll see these pastors in their robes. I got to do, do that. <laughs> but what got me was, was, I didn't know our own folks would fall for some mess like that with a pastor out there talking about okay go out there and eat some grass and i said no that's got to be a joke and he was out there chewing on the grass 
Yeah. We we've been conditioned over the course of years to to fall for stuff like that. Because you have to remember that we're we're the only people that don't have any true leadership. And it's also uh stated in the Bible that we, we will be sent over here to worship wood and stone and gods that were not our own. Oh yeah, queen. Yeah, I just, I just wonder I just wonder why. I just wonder why, mm -hmm. why um, a lot of the black churches think that they have to have theater, hooping and hollering and buck. Where did all this crap start from? We're um, kick, kicking up dust. Because my, I remember my, 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 my dear mother was raised in a church like that. And she said on Sunday, they would get in school and they would stay all Sunday, take yeah. a break to eat and just, what do you, where did that come from? Yeah. And you know what, Queen? A lot of this came from actually chattel slavery. That's where a lot of it came from, originated from. You know, um, Sunday wow. were the days that many of the slaves actually felt like they were free because they didn't have to work. They went to church and after church, they didn't have to go back into the slave field until Monday. So that's where a lot of that entertaining came from. And they start cutting loose and it just started becoming more and more of a show instead of what it was intended for, which, you know, which it was just mind control for our people, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. chattel slavery, do you know, during chattel slavery, when they would beat us, the slave master mm -hmm. said, you're supposed to forgive me, forgive me. Forgive me. You know, that's where that forgiveness Disgusting. that you see in our people today comes from. Mm -hmm. It came from there. Or even when they were about to lynch the person, do you know some devil would walk up to the person about to die, say, make sure you're right with God and forgive us just before they would lynch our people. It's disgusting. It's it? sick. I went, I went over um, two weeks ago. Battle slavery. I went over two weeks ago and looked at um, a couple of the videos at my uncle's church. Mm -hmm. And my uncle, um, um, he has three children. Um, he, he's married to a Mexican woman and all the children are adults. And, and his youngest son, you can tell that he's taken over the church because my, my, his oldest son will not. He's just too feminine and he's gay. Um, and the play, family do play like he not. And my youngest cousin was up there at the pulpit speaking in tongue. And then this is the part that got me. When it was time to pay your tithes at my uncle's church, there's about six stairs um, or, um, in a circle that as you lead up to the podium and how they put their tithes out, they just put it right there on, on the stairs and stuff. Um, and when you have an inside track, because I know this family well and I know how corrupt my family is. It was just really hard to stomach and um, oh hard God. to watch. Hard Queen, to watch. Queen, my, I got a cousin that got a church. I'm going to show you him online because you said you, I'm going to show you him. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I love my cousin. I really do. I, I, this is somebody I was very close with growing up as a child. He decided to become a pastor. Let me see if I can share this. And he's still into the church and, you know, I, you know, he's not going to change. I mean, this is just, it is what it is. And, you know, that's why I'm saying a lot of our people, we're not going to be able to save them. Let me show you just a clip of him. But I, I know what you mean, because I got family members that are pastors. Mm -hmm. Can you all see my screen? I can see it. You can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let me just start. This. Yes, we can see it. This uh, is Reverend James Kenshin. This is my first cousin. He's got a church down in um, Miami, Florida. All of my Florida relatives are um, part of his congregation. And he has a pretty sizable congregation too, but this is him. Yeah, I'm gonna close, but there's a man in the Old Testament by the name of Joseph that will tell you if the Lord hadn't been on his side, Joseph wouldn't have been able to make it. His own brothers put him down in a pit. 
He had a coat of many colors. And that's why folk don't like you. You got too many colors in your coat. Yes. They put him down in a pit. But the Lord was with him. Sold him into slavery. He got falsely accused in part of his house. But the Lord was with him. Can I get a witness here? He went down in prison. But the Lord was with him. Yes. And I want to close by telling you be careful how you treat people for the same folk you see going up. You might meet them coming down. The Bible says that a famine broke out in the land. Yes. And here come Joseph's brothers. They came looking for bread. And when they get there in chapter 45 of Genesis, look who's standing there as Secretary of Agriculture. Look who's standing there in charge of the. But see, yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. That's what <laughs> what did he say? This is my cousin, okay? Rock and roll, huh? And he getting it in. He's Such a rock and roll. You know what? It makes me sick, though. Because we know that's not the way. But unfortunately, as much as I love him, we grew up together. We've been around each other from childhood on up. He ain't going to change. You know, he yeah. ain't been out of that Christian church. He's been a pastor now, probably gone on 30 years. And he's not going to let go of it. And, you know, when I first got into the truth, that was one of the things I thought I could do. Oh, I got to tell my family and, oh, I can't wait for them to know who they are. You're yeah. going to be shocked. Right, because you, you love them. You love tell them. them who they are and they don't give a damn. Man, you know, uh, Lisa, yeah. how much I struggle with that here. I struggle. I, I went I went to... um. I went to Texas, to, uh, Atlanta to visit my older brother. I brought some material that I wanted to share with him. And I was like, bro, you know, I wrote this. It got it all in here. I made like a, a six, seven page document. I wrote up myself and put the pictures and the historical brother tear graph, everything. I even shared it with my younger brother. I was like, bro, I put a lot of work in this. I want you to, uh, uh, he lives in uh, Texas. I went from Atlanta to uh, Texas, visit my older brother. Then I visit my younger brother because I wanted I wanted them to know. And I read him some stuff out of the Apocrypha. I was like, bro, let, let me read this. And he's standing there like, so what that mean? Like, bro, man. you got to read it, man. It's like, <laughs> like, you I've done the same thing. It. I've done the same thing. Same reactions. Yeah. Yeah. And that was him at a, <coughs> a revival night. So wow. he's not leaving the Christian church. And I just had to come to terms that many in my own family is just not going to make it. They're just not. They, they are still clinging to Christianity. They are still getting up right now. I bet you if I pick up the phone and call down to my Georgia family and Florida family, they're going to be in church. That's where they're going to be. I had my mom tell me right quick. I heard my mom tell, I said, Mom, I've been trying to break all this stuff down to her. I try to uh, segue some information to her as much as I can. So I told her one day, I said, uh, she said, well, I'm going to church when I uh, when I get to Texas. I said, Mom, come on now. You ought to know. Because she do a little bit of her research and stuff on her own. But I told her, I was like, Mom, don't step foot outside no church now. She said, Boy, I ain't trying to hear what you're trying to say. I'm going to church. I was like, oh, man. yeah. All right. <laughs> That's all I could say was, all right. Yeah, I, I know exactly the kind of position, you know, I, I know exactly what you're saying because that's happened to me. I've been said, I've been told I've been in a cult, you know, from like my own mom. 
And I've had situations where, like, I'd take, like, a, a cousin of mine. He came over to visit, and I was just, you know, telling him all this stuff. You know, you think that they'd be excited. you think that they get it. But he just stood there, like, sitting down there smiling at me while I'm telling him and just, just holding fast, like, well, yeah, uh, we was in a Christian church every Sunday. We would stump that devil out. Right, I, right. I would just look at him like, nigga. Hey, Lisa, right. Lisa, I send you an email uh -huh. from, from my uncle's church. Uh -huh. I just want you to just play a bit of it right at about 40, 48 minutes. 48 okay. minutes of the video. To my email. All right, hold on. Let me um, share this. Now, now, mind y'all, as she's pulling this up, this uncle, um, we'll put it this way. One, um, when my grandfather passed, my entire side of my father's side of the family disowned me over money. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and play this. Good. Stop it. <laughs> <Those are> my cousins. <laughs> So go into 48 minutes of it. 48 minutes, okay. This is down in Glendale, Arizona. That was Friday, and God sent it to him on Saturday. Tell your neighbor, don't tell me what God can't do. And let me tell you this, what he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you, because where the devil wants to take your job, and you've been a giver, God will send a raven to give you a job. Well, that'll preach. Because you know the prophet had no food, but God sent a bird to give food. So I want you to be encouraged in your giving today that I don't care what it looks like. God can send a raven to give you that refund. God can send a raven to make you save $50. God can send a raven to give you a new job. But if you put your trust in Almighty God, lift your voice and say, He will take care of you. Now come and bring the tithing and the offering and bring him a joy. Joy, 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 joy. Joy. Bring <laughs> that damn money. <laughs> Man. Oh my goodness! Bring that goddamn money up here. <laughs> yeah, and people start putting money all on the on there, and I, me and my husband was like, "What?" Because I only been in that church once when my grandfather had um my grandfather had passed, and um and everybody was just you know they got all excited to see the Newmans because my grandfather was a doctor, but he had a PhD in education, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting, me and my husband sitting up here just shaking our head because. One of my cousins, she got up to sing. She looks like a man, so she had on a three-piece suit. And I was like, "Ooh, I can't wait to get out of here." It was just, it was just, it was just too much. Yeah, and then I, I have another that. uncle. He has a church. It's a little bit smaller, but he has a um, ATM in his church and stuff. But basically, the long of the short of it, my grandfather had a great deal of money, and. Um, it just happened that out of all the seven siblings, my father was the first one to pass. Okay. Then my grandfather. So I ended up inheriting my father's um, portion of the money and they was pissed. And my uncle, because that was his son talking, called me on the phone and told me what I was supposed to do. And I told him, no, we're going to go by the state, the laws by the state of Arizona. He thought that he could throw his will at me. And I knew that it was going to come at me and my family, they're bullies. So when you don't go along with their program, what they'll do, they'll just disown you and don't talk to you at all. Uh -huh. uh, well, that's fine. I won't talk to you either. <laughs> but you know what? That's how it is. Now, my cousin, you saw him in his suit, but he does wear an African um, robe when he's normally in his own church and he's uh, preaching. So he doesn't always, you know, sometimes he's in his suit, but in that clip that I showed you of him, he was at a revival. He was preaching at a revival. Mm -hmm. That's but, I yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just you and, and damn near all of my family members 
in Florida are members at his church. The whole the whole side of my dad's family all go to his church. Yeah, the, so I'm leading up to the money. Give a good, good, good performance, and then pass around. Yeah, that, it's that's the show. Woo! Just being entertained um, one day a week, and it's on the wrong day. It's not even the Sabbath day. It's Sunday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, that's not even what tithing is for. Like, if anybody no. could go back and read what it was for, it was to help people that's poor, or that's sick, right, and, hungry, orphans, and, and right. It wasn't money. It them. wasn't money wow. either. A lot of times, people donated cattle or, or part of their crops. It wasn't even yeah that they were. That's tithing. right. And that was for, and, and if it wasn't for them, it was for the tribe of Levi, the priesthood. That's we right. Have no priest right now. I remember when my uncle first started church, first started his church. I remember it was back in 1978, and um, and I we, we we literally watched that church grow in front of our eyes. And to make a long story short, that church bought my uncle and his wife a Mercedes apiece. Mm -hmm. They have sent them on trips around the world, and um. Black folks don't have money. Yeah. I mean, what, what what do that got to do with anything? And I remember uh, Nothing. his brother was telling me, our real estate agent was telling us um, that his pastor was pissed one day at church because he got tired of flying to these different events at church and he wanted his own plane. Yeah. I've heard that before. Stay into that too. That's but a, that's a, a going trend right now. <laughs> right. And, you know, when we get into the kingdom, the Levitical priesthood will really be no more. We're going back under the order of Melchizedek. You know, I, I, I don't know. You know, it, it's a lot of deception, even among the Hebrew Israelites. You got a lot of them tithing. Wow. Yeah, and it's like, I don't have a problem with helping out our brothers because they, they saved my life. You know, the ones who teach it, the, 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 the Bible cut and dry, and they don't have any leaven inside their bread that they that they feed us with, mm -hmm. you know. I would love to support them, you know, if I yeah, could. It's not, it's not all of them like that, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's but, um, not all of them. It's a lot of them are doing it this for the same reason these pastors are doing it. Yeah, you know, yeah, I know. Living larger and luxury items, you know, and that's not what tithing is for. Right, yeah. that's personal gain. When you 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 using what you learn for personal gain, for monetary gain and stuff, you totally destroy the whole image of everything. But I had to learn over the years. I had to learn over the years the reason why there's wheat and tares, sheep mm -hmm. and goats, mm -hmm. you know. And when I realized that, that's when I had to step back and say, you know what? I want to help. I want to do my part to help wake wake people up. But at the end of the day, he said that he was going to do the separation. You know what I mean? So only thing I could do is is search out my salvation with fear and trembling, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, um, and I, re I even remember when I was growing up, <coughs> you know, I would get sent down south to visit my grandmother and grandfathers. And Sunday morning came, wake up, we're going to church. Wake up. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. I clockwork. I even, had, I even had to turn that off once I reached a certain age and I Went didn't to want church to go. on Monday. I love my grandparents and I wanted to see them, but I knew if I would have went down there, it would have been get up and go to church. Went to church on Tuesday. Yeah, you know. Went to church on Friday. And down there, and to add to the injury, everybody walked to church. <laughs> he didn't even get a, in a car. And everybody walked. Uh, what the most side says about this kind of behavior that we've always had, it's like drunkenness. It's like, it's like, like all we've been seeing is people acting like they're just drunk. You know, like they lost their mind. Like, yeah, I have some verses. I have some verse, verses to read, if that's all right. Uh -huh, go ahead. All right, it's uh, Isaiah 5, uh, 11 to 13. Bring so it out. Yeah. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink that continue until night, 
till wine inflame them, and the harp and the vial and the tabret and pipe and wine are in their feast, but they regard not the work of Yahweh, neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. You know, so right there, he's sort of describing, you know, the condition that we're in of having no knowledge and uh, the drunken behavior that we have that's not according to, to, to his will. And so we tie in drunkenness with uh, Revelations 18 and 3, and we'll see, like, you know, that the nations are under the same delusions. So it goes for yeah, all of, nations. A have, lot of people are doing stuff out of fear and guilt. And fear and Let guilt me continue this real quick. Wow. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Right. So it's like uh it's a real thing when we see people that's just really uh like i saw snoop dogg he had like a bunch of crips come and do the seawalk at like some kind of christian gospel congregation thing i saw it's that just, it's just like uh the what the bible says about our people just acting like madmen is really real like mm -hmm. we're we, we really see it every day yeah yeah you know, and it's just like when I was um, listening to some of the Hebrew Israelite back in the day when I used to listen to their videos and they would just go off on the women and, oh, we're going to get you women in order and we're going to do this. First of yeah. all, the Most High ain't hardly going to let you get in the kingdom and abuse the daughters of Zion. Okay, <laughs> It's just not going to happen. No, I heard no. things worse than that. Oh, I heard a brother. I heard a brother in a camp talk about how they was going to snatch up like the young daughters of like the heathen and rape them. Yeah, and he said I that they that. were going to get them while they were young. Yeah. Twelve years old. Yeah. I was like, bro, be out your yeah, dog on mine. Boy, the most high that Woo. is not the point. That is not the point. Is you not? <laughs> Well, you know what? Uh, hey, wait, know, goats and sheep, man. Goats and sheep. Goats and sheep. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, and uh, the ones that worship it. And I think there was a fire at one of those churches where they're worshiping Beyonce. This world is just crazy. You you got to understand why the Most High got to do away with this earth. Yeah. You got to do away with it. It is too damn corrupt. That's wait. what I was saying on the last time we spoke together uh-huh i was saying that i love our people so much and i get so hurt i get so like upset i get so mad man, and pissed off the, when i man, see the stuff that the happens sometimes i cry man yeah me too like, and man i get like that but then it's like i see the the kind of stuff that our people are doing and it, it forces me to be in a position where i say yeah these people gonna get it and i know why like uh Okay, family. I finally seen a video of walking the bench. This is new stuff to me. My goodness. Yeah, you never <laughs> seen that? No. Crazy. My uncle was the pastor at this church for, I think, like 35 years. And when he left, he gave it to another pastor. And that's what he did. He walked the bench. Um, this is what I want to show y'all. I <laughs> laughed when I saw this. Oh, my God. This video came out in 2010. In fact, it was the same year I found out I was a Hebrew. I want to show this to you. Let me see if I can share my screen. Some of you might have seen this, but this is 2010. And I probably knew I was a Hebrew for just a few months when this video came out. Let me show this to you. This is RT News. Now watch this. The Most High ain't playing. Jesus is on fire. It's amazing. Look the cross. Is that a church on fire? It's a statue of white Jesus. Mm. The Burn it. A lightning strike hit it, and it went up in flames. It was white Jesus, y'all. 
There it is. Oh, wow. That was huge. <laughs> a bolt of lightning came down. It was a lot of Haitians that went to that church. And one black woman was crying. I think this is it. Hold on. Let me see if it. She was First crying. First five violent storms have torched a Miami Valley landmark. Good evening, everyone. I'm Michelle Kingsfield. And I'm Mark Allen. That statue known as the King of Kings, giant Jesus to some is no more. Cindy is live. You got that right. To show us what's left of this iconic landmark. Amazing. Well, Mark, Michelle, these ashes are all that's left of the giant Jesus statue. And we've seen people stopping by here all day, picking up these remains and taking them home as a reminder of what once stood behind me. And take a look, a metal mm. skeleton frame now, all that's left of what used to be a 60-foot tall, six-story high statue. Oh, my God. Giant Jesus, no more. It was quite the sight when a bolt of lightning went straight through the outstretched hand of Jesus, an act of God reduced the iconic landmark to ashes. Lightning had hit one of the hands, and, and the, the fire first started in, and I believe it was the right hand. Word of this fire spread as fast as the flames. Within minutes, a big crowd gathered at the base of the statue, some very emotional, taking this as some sort of sign from up above. Others glad to see it gone. This cannot be a coincidence. This is something that we all have to go on our face as the church and pray and ask for forgiveness and repent from every sin in our lives so that God himself will come back. We worship Jesus. We worship God. And we need to come together as a church and start fasting and praying and see what we're missing together as a church. Brad, touch down Jesus. And missing the truth, buddy. Do you hope they don't rebuild it? Well, he's got a lot of money, and he likes it. It's his church. His wife likes it, so he'll probably rebuild it. More power to him. I'm just glad I don't look at this one for a while. The church is already saying Jesus will rise from these ashes, and this time <laughs> he'll be bigger and better. This uh -oh. one is well-rounded, but it was also made of highly flammable styrofoam wrapped in fiberglass. Everyone looking at this devastation is trying to find some meaning in the ruins. I think it's the Lord telling us that it's about him and not about images that we can make of him. Hey, you're looking at a live picture of Interstate 75 over there. Traffic coming to a slow down yeah, as they see the statue here. Yeah. Everyone trying to no, get a look at it. We do want to remind you that Ohio State Highway Patrol officers will be citing those who stop along the interstate to take pictures of these remains. That is dangerous, so please try not to do that. Total damage estimates here are estimated to be $700,000. Now, I did speak to the founder of the church, and I'll have more with him coming up tonight at 5.30. Reporting live in Monroe, Sonubasu, two news on your side. Man, when the most I say no false idols, that's right. exactly what he means, okay? Right. <laughs> uh, you see her crying, we better repent. You damn right, you better yeah. repent. You better repent and get the hell out of that church. That's what you better do. That's what he's telling you. You repent and leave. Wow. Yeah, and it's so cool because, you know, when he took down Egypt, you know, he said that he was going to kill and destroy every god in Egypt. And he said he's going to do the same thing once he once he uh, brings the hammer down on all the nations. And yeah. we can expect more of that. Like, Yeah, it is. And the one in, I think, Mexico, that Jesus in Mexico got struck by lightning, too. Wow. That one, you know, the one that they ever, you know, show a lot. Yeah, and, is it, is it Brazil? In, 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 yeah, Brazil. I'm sorry, it's yeah. Brazil. That one yeah. got hit by lightning too. I think it yeah. got twice during the same storm. These people better quit playing. I think yeah. it was a, a a statement when the beat. I think how did it go? It was a statement that this woman made at a radio station about the Beatles. Um, I think related to. I, I don't know what the statement was verbatim that they are more popular than. Jesus himself or something like that and that radio station burnt down to a crisp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, good. Serves mm -hmm. them right. Mm -hmm. See, the most I don't play and he don't like mockery. When you nah, say not at all. the Beatles are greater than him, then that's a problem for you. Yeah, that sure is. You know, and I, mm -mm, you just made yourself a target. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I, oh, that, that news clip came <laughs> around the time when I first, probably just a few months, I found out I was a Hebrew. And I remember watching that back in 2010 when that came out. Yeah, that would be an eye opener there. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, man, you better get your ass out of them churches. That's what he's telling you. You better get out of there. I mean, they are lucky it was just the white Jesus statue and not the entire church. But, you know, hey, that's the madness word. You know, <clears throat> the bottom line is we don't have a lot of time. People better no, choose a side. Facts. You better choose wisely. That's all I can say. When the most high come back, we're going to look up in the sky. The black Messiah is going to be looking down on this earth. And it's going to be a lot of people running for their lives because they know they've done his people wrong. Yeah, that's, that's when everybody oh. that's terrible how human beings can be. That um, and, and I'm only gonna just strictly speak on our own, that when it do hit them, then instantly all of a sudden you want to be black again, you want to know the truth, you have total belief in all of this. You know, yeah. I, I truly believe that some people really do know the truth, but they so want to partake into this world that it's like they'll put that on the unquote back burner. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I had a couple of um, black people tell me, well, I know that we are, we are the Hebrews, <clears throat> but if I really live that, then I got to give up stuff and I don't want to give stuff up. So what they're talking about, they don't want to give up their luxuries. They don't want to give up the pork. They don't want to give up night clubbing. That's what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's I, not. They, and I told them, I said, <laughs> you know what? You're not even going to miss those stumps, uh, those things. You're not. You're really coming not. to the truth. But they really don't want to let go of this earth. And what what can you do? There's nothing you can do about that. Some of them yeah, think they can do um, both. Yeah, he going to do the separate. Yeah. What the most I said is that you can't please me, you can't serve me if you don't sacrifice. Like when he had Abraham, you know, to go and to presumably sacrifice his son, he didn't actually have him to do it, you know, because he's nice like that. He could have actually had him to, to do it, but he didn't. He just wanted to see if you were gonna if you were gonna follow me, if you're gonna if you if you were gonna hold something back from me. You know, we have to give those things up. And like you said, Lisa, we don't miss it. Like, I don't miss, I don't miss pork. I don't miss, um. Crabs. I don't miss lobster, shrimp. Not, I don't miss none of that stuff. Is, is. It feels I don't really want to be here. To serve the you know most you know how I don't belong. Really good. You know how I describe it? When you, when those things that you are basically shedding out of your life, it takes a weight off of you. Cause you, it you, does. You, you realize why was I upholding that? Why was I partaking into that? And it's just that extra stress out of your life. It really, yeah. it, it, like you said, it, it should it should naturally come. Right. Naturally, yeah. Come. Mm -hmm. Naturally come. That's right. <laughs> and somebody had asked me. I thought this was funny. Am I still allowed to have my pet? I was like, of course you can have your pet. Our people had pets back in biblical times. We were bling. <laughs> our pets were blinging. Just like we were loaded in gold, our cats and dogs were walking around with solid gold collars. I mean, we had our pets blinging, okay? Yeah, I mean, it talks about people having their dogs under the table, you know, when they were eating dinner. All of that's in there, you know. But the bottom line is some of them won't even give it a try because they're afraid of letting go of some of the things they have now. And that's really stupid. But like I said, he doesn't want anybody forced to come to them. If, you know, on judgment day, they are the ones that are going to have to sit there and say, I wanted my pork instead of you. You know, they're going to have to say it. Mm -hmm. It's all bad. No, you know, hey, they're going to have to explain that. And all these the people saying the Bible ain't real. Do you know they're going to have to sit there and explain to him in the flesh why it's not real? They're going to look stupid. Mm -hmm. They're going to look straight up stupid. Yeah, that's I, uh, the same mindset that um that uh the Most High was talking about when uh with um with Pharaoh, right? 
Yeah, he, he hard, 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 his heart. Pharaoh's heart like that and for the simple purpose to prove and we're to him. Our, our enemies with hardened hearts today. Right. Calling the cops on non crime because that's how hardened their hearts are towards us. Right. Right. And that's, that's, that's exactly that's, that's what's for happening. Purpose. That's for purpose because he's going, the Most High is going to prove who he is. He's been doing it time and time again. Uh huh. Yeah. And he, it, it, yes, absolutely. He says that it's the, when it comes to that time when when everything is said and done, and y'all are back in the kingdom with me. No more is anybody going to tell their brothers or their sister. You have to know the Most High. He says everybody's going to know who I am. Right. Exactly right. So, it, Loretta, Loretta, Loretta. 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 We're all going to know Hebrew without taking a class. He's just going to put it all back in us. Everything that we lost, he's going to take it and put it back in us. So you're going to automatically know your Hebrew. You're automatically yeah. going to know how to read it. And you're going to know already the law, statutes, and commandments because he's going to put all of it. All of that information is coming back into us. Back. He's going to put it through That's Joel house. too, right? Yeah, hey, Lisa, Lisa, did you get a chance to check those emails that I had sent you? Your name in Hebrew. Yes, yes. What's your name, actually, what your name? name uh huh. Name? Actually, that was one of the first things I did when I came into the truth. I said, "Where is my name even biblical?" And, and you know, and then I was able to look it up and find it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, when I went through that preliminal stage of finding out who I was, I kid you not, Queen. When I found out, I literally sat up all night reading the Bible. I wouldn't even go to bed. Yeah. I was so excited, I would not even go to bed. When uh, when I got woke up, it was amazing. It was like uh, I was just at the point where I was just broken down, and I really just I needed to change. You know, I didn't want to be, you know, the way that I was because I was realizing the things that I do. It's like. It's like this is so far from God, right? But and, and, it was like, go ahead. Yeah, and one of the things I also had to do, the first thing I did when I found out who I was, I repented. I mm -hmm. repented because I was like, Father, I'm sorry it took me this long to wake the hell up, and I I went through my whole life believing I was Gentile, and I had a Bible in my house at my disposal and I could have picked it up at any time and found out the truth and I didn't do it. it was so the first thing I had to do was repent to him. Well, uh, I wanted to share with y'all that, um, um, that like KD, uh, truthfully honest, I had a discussion on the phone with her and um, she was the one that had revealed it to me because she said that was the reason why she had joined the channel because I named it the True Royal Family and she said I was quoting scripture. And then one video she watched, she realized I wasn't aware. And I was like, what are you talking about? And when she was showing me stuff, I was like dumbfounded. Then I went back over some, um, I was just thinking, not over some videos. And I was like, oh, they was trying to tell me all along. And I didn't know. I didn't know. And then one of my subs told me, they don't um, leave too many messages, but they said, him and his wife been watching the growth of my channel and they knew that eventually I was going to find out the truth. And I was just sitting there like, what? And ever since Truthfully Honest told me I lost interest in TV. All I want to know is more about the word. It's like I'm thirsty and he can't quench my thirst. Mm -hmm. And, um, That's and I do know mm -hmm. that that is, that is how you know that the most high has picked you. Right. That's right. He uses us. Facts. And when you are dying for more information and more knowledge, that right there is a clear indicator that he's he chose you. Oh, okay. so hence he for us. goes back to the natural, mm -hmm. how it naturally is supposed to have it. Now, the Queen, exactly, brother. Now, Queen, that's how you know he picked you. It's not like these Akhenazi Jews that went into our land and they hand appointed themselves. That's not how it goes. The most high selects you. Yeah. Many are called, but few are chosen. And right. I didn't get to finish my story, but go ahead. It, it, go ahead. Please. It, like, it felt incredible. It felt like something was 
on me, like uh, on my forehead. I felt like there was burning and writing on my forehead. It literally did. And it's like, it was incredible. I never felt so pure. I never felt so good. And it's like, for three weeks after that happened to me, it's like I was just compelled to read the Bible. I learned more in those three weeks than I did in my entire life. It was amazing. It's like I was just led to like, you know, people who mentioned that, yeah, you're Jews. And they would teach about, you know, how we uh, went into slavery and why and things like that. And I would see like the ancient pictures of us, you know. And how the ancient depictions of Israelites, they look like us. And all that stuff just worked on me. Mm-hmm. And then you find yourself, you're surrounded by the information. You're drawn to it. Right. Like 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 attraction. You're attracted to it. Mm-hmm. I want to I want to read this from uh uh from what uh Lisa was saying about um getting our identity back once the uh, most high come and redeem his people this is uh ezekiel 36 verse uh 7 ezekiel 36 verse 17 i'm sorry it says son of man when the house of israel dwelt in their own land they defiled it by their own way and by their doings their way was before me as the uncleanness as a removed woman Wherefore, I poured out my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way, according to their doings. I've judged them. And when they entered into the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name, when they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel hath profaned among the heathen, whether they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake which ye have profaned among the heathens where ye went. And I will sanctify thy great, my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know I am the Lord, saith the Lord God. When I shall be sanctified in you before your eyes, for I will take you from among the heathens and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you a new heart. Also will I give you a new spirit will I put in you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I wanted to say something real quick. If anybody want to see what their name look like in Hebrew, just Google it and just put your name Mm-hmm. put in Hebrew and you'll see it. Mm-hmm. Now, now you're not going to, not all of us are going to find out what our name mean because not all of our names are. When, you're gonna, when we get in the kingdom, you're going to get a whole new name. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember you told me that. You're going to get a whole new name. Now, one thing I wanted to say when you were talking about, you know, finding out you were chosen and everything through truthfully honest, mm-hmm. the most high always knew you were coming. You know that? No, he I didn't chose, realize. He chose you when you were still in your mother's womb. That's how he chose all of us. Do you know that? That's right. Facts. He chosen that way. When you were still being carried by your mother, he had. The Bible says, before the foundation of the world, I have chosen you. Already chose you before you even came out of your mom's womb. Mm-hmm. That's how we're all chosen. Amazing. Mm hmm. So it goes way back, even way when you were going through your childhood, not understanding what was going on, but you knew something wasn't right. That mm-hmm. spirit was already on you. Yeah, I, I, 
I knew something was going on because y'all, you know, you've heard some of my videos. I have visions. Thank goodness my family would let me speak and not say I was crazy. And they just let me be. Mm -hmm. my still protected me. They let me be. I don't always get it right. And I say this often. Um, and um, and I, I found out later, I'm finding out that I was shielded, that a lot of us, when we talk about these things, they'll say, you, you, you're, that's demonic. You're making it up. You're crazy. Mm -hmm. Those are yeah. things. It'll, it'll shut you down. I didn't know. I was able to be free to speak the way that I was. But now I'm finding out later, it, I was free to speak amongst my family. Oh, yeah. You know, I used to see things happen around me. Mm -hmm. I could never figure out why <laughs> it was happening, but I knew something was up. Now, I remember one woman was bothering me on my job. And do you know, one day she came to work and the boss met her out in a parking lot and fired her. Wow. After she was, you know, taking digs at me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Then it was another white woman that didn't like me. You know how their hatred is towards us. It's unjust. Mm -hmm. It's really no reason behind it, but I knew she was a racist asshole. Anyway, her ass went away on a business trip. She died in her hotel room. Wow. It would seem like everybody that would try to attack me on some level, something mm -hmm. would always happen to them. Now, and Lisa, I, 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 my father. a long time, I, I knew something was up but I just never connected it until I came into the truth. And I said, oh my God, he was protecting me all along. Uh -huh. That happened to my father a lot too, because they was always messing with him, Lisa, at work. And it was an older white man that constantly, constantly messed with him. And my father finally confronted him in the parking lot and they worked the graveyard shift. So I guess they got off around about seven or so. And he said what he had to say to him. And they said that week, that man had a massive heart attack and he was just known for messing with black folks anyway. But he, he especially didn't like my father because my father didn't have no bend in his DNA. And um, he would question everything that he would do. Yep. And one day they told my dad, you know, that week, oh, Mr. So-and-so had. Um, and then my father started noticing it. Yeah. Um, and and then that last time I was working in corporate America, it was, I always fell out with the white women, as you can see, <laughs> nothing new. And yeah, yeah. So anyway, this one white woman and I weren't getting along. <laughs> and just before, cause I had resigned, I was taking another position at a different company. Just before I left, she came up to me and she apologized. She said, you know what? I'm going to apologize to you. She said, ever since you and I stopped getting along, nothing has gone right in my life. That's exactly what she said to me. And I just looked mm. at her. I didn't know what she was talking about, but that's what she walked up and said to me. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and then I think back on those things and I'm like, oh my God, he's been looking after me all this time. And I didn't even know it. I would like to uh, share a situation, a testimony that's similar that happened to me when I was in the uh, in the military. I served in um in uh, Iraq. I'm a um a first infantry division in Charlie Company, and we went to mm -hmm. uh to crit Iraq, and um I was in charge of a a, a Humvee, and I was my first sergeant's driver, and my Humvee uh, tire went flat. So it was my responsibility to do all the uh, maintenance work on, on my vehicle. But the, uh, the tires on the Humvees are in three parts and the, the, the rim is a, is a four part rim. It, it comes in pieces and it's really, really difficult to uh, change that, that tire out. Uh, so I required uh, help from my platoon and one of the members in my platoon by the name of King, he felt some type of way about me get, receiving help to change out my tire. So he approached me uh, that day and he cussed me out something fierce. 
he laid into me with all his fury. Call me dumb, stupid, ignorant. You could do this work yourself. We don't need you lazy, all of this, right? Mm -hmm. And so I told him, I said, look, look, King, look, man, this, this is the situation. I can't do this by myself. You ought to know that. But just look, I hear what you're saying. Just walk away. Leave me alone. And and I've been trying to tell him to stay away. He he's been he's he's been, you know, picking at me ever since we, we got there. But anyway, we had um did a mission where we had to uh, transport some uh, concrete barriers to place around the police station down the road. And so it was going to be like 18 hours for us to sit out there and provide security for the construction workers because it took all night and part of the morning. And so we tired. The morning came. We're tired. We're sleepy and stuff like that. So King, he was the saw gunner for the company commander, the captain. He he was the lead vehicle. He he was uh he was standing in the back of the Humvee, standing up, pulling security, and all of a sudden, um, an Iraqi fired an RPG. Whoa! That morning, and went through the windshield of the commander's Humvee and struck the pedestal that held King's uh, rifle in place. And he was standing there. So basically, the RPG landed at his feet and blown up in his face. Wow. Mm. And he took the full blunt of that explosion from our RPG and blowed him 20 feet out the truck. Wow. And so we, when we get back from uh, from Iraq back to uh, Germany to Garrison, um, he got out of the hospital and he made a straight beeline to my dorm room and he knocks on my door. So I open it up. I see King. He's bandaged up and stuff like that. And he was like, he was like, hey, uh, Thompson, um, just wanted to tell you, man, I'm sorry for what I did to you and, and what I said to you. And I shook the man's hand, gave him a hug, and told him, hey, man, it's all good. I'm glad to see that you're still alive, man. You know, and when I look back on that, that's how I knew that touch not thine anointing and do my prophet no harm. Oh. That's how I knew that the Most High was watching over me oh, and yeah. keeping me safe and keeping me under his covering the hmm? entire time. Yeah. Wow. And the thing is, I can even think of times when as far back in childhood, when I was in school, I would see things happen, even to teachers that I didn't like. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, <laughs> you know when you really think about it, I was like, oh, my God. You know, he had to be there for me for a lot of things that I saw happen around me. He had to be there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No doubt about it. I wanted to share with y'all, um, I remember this very distinctly. I was nine years old and we had witnesses to this. This was my mother um, and some other people and my second mom who's still alive. And my mother was driving down the street and I was on my bike chasing her and she was going to make a right hand turn and I was going to proceed um, across the intersection in this particular street that we lived on. Um, it, it was only three houses. It was it was just a bunch of warehouses. So on the weekend, kids could just zing their bikes back and forth. So I found out later when my mother made the turn, she told everybody in the car, my baby getting ready to get hit by a car. So opposite of her, it was a huge Cadillac that came and I'll never forget it. It was white and it had red interior. As I go across the intersection, I got snatched so high up in the sky. Now, when I got snatched, my eyes closed, but I went up real high. And when I opened my eyes, I was on my feet. And when I look down, my bike is crushed, literally like you take a Coke can and crush it. And I was shook up and I was embarrassed. And my mother standing there. The man had hit me. I never forget it. He was a very tall black, a uh, very tall dark brother. He was shook up, and they just all looking at me and looking at this bike. So I get embarrassed and walk off. And when I had that discussion many years later, I had told my mother, 
And my second mom, what I experienced, and my mother said she literally seen the car go through me. And yeah. they couldn't understand. They couldn't understand how I got there where I was standing. Um, they're looking at my bike and everything. And I thought about that for years. And either it was one of my guardian angels or the most high himself just grabbed me and put me right on my feet. And I can even remember at the age of either six years old, I was sitting in the back of a 1965 Mustang. This is how well I remember it. White interior, baby blue in L.A. at Jack in a Box. And the words that came to me that you are one blessed child. Well, I figured it was because I had the opportunity to know my great, great grandparents very, very well on both sides of my family. So I would I got more stories, but I'm not going to tell them. But I would I would have these type of experiences like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I, I think many of us, you know, now that we step into the truth, you can always look back and realize, you know, there were things that really could have gone bad, but mm -hmm. nothing stopped it from happening, you know? And it was so strange, Queen, because every time, and I always ended up, I always, to this day, I don't end up with altercations with white women as much now because I have pretty much separated myself, but it seemed like every single time I had an altercation with them, something would happen to them. Mm -hmm. so, something would happen to every last, and then it's like, no, this is not a coincidence, but you know, I'm just grateful to be where I am. I'm grateful that the most high, it at least allowed me to learn more about who I was and who he is. Amen. You know, he did not have to tap me because we, God knows we, we go day by day and see millions of people that don't get tapped. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't see, we go day by day and we see elderly people and they've never been tapped. They've gone through their whole life believing all of the wrong things. So the fact that he woke me up, I, I will never stop being grateful about that. Absolutely. Hey, Lisa, KD asked for a link. Oh, okay. Well, we're getting ready to conclude Okay. Um, KD, I'm going to be doing another hangout tomorrow and you can come on to the panel. I'm going to be doing something different, but it is going to be something from the Bible. All right. So I just haven't scheduled it yet. So when I do that, <coughs> um, KD, you can, you're more than welcome to come on to the panel, but I, I am so thankful that all of you came on the panel, Gab Talk Media. Rochelle, you know, the people that left the panel, um, thank you for coming on. And we will definitely do this more often on the Sabbath. I know I have some subscribers that absolutely hate the Bible. Well, all I can say to you, you have a choice. You can remain as a subscriber or you can leave. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it too. All of you and the rest of your Shabbat. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. All right.